This must be the place. Professor Oubier's house. It looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching the story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. There were only three things I didn't like about spiders. The way they looked, the way they moved, and the fact that they lived on the same planet as me. This spider was big, mean, and hairy, and definitely not a native of Europe. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. but. I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. The bookcase had been anchored to the wall by a protruding metal bracket. It had sheared off as the bookcase had fallen leaving a jagged edge. With one mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. Even if I had the time, I wouldn't be able to get to the books beneath the heavy case. Yellow pus was seeping from below the bookcase. That spider was very squashed. I wasn't touching that spider goo. Nice couple. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. It was a half bottle of extra strong Mexican tequila. Just what I needed under the circumstances. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew, disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. What looked like a little shriveled wiener lay on the carpet. Thankfully, it was only the worm from the tequila bottle. Well, I wasn't going to eat it. But life had taught me one thing. No matter how unlikely it seems, the strangest objects have their uses. Even tequila worms. I drunk enough of that. In the drawer was a small decorated pot.
It was an oddly designed candle holder with a coil of metal shaped like a snake. Highly artistic, but of very little practical use. The bars attached to the window would prevent anyone getting in. They also stopped me from getting out. I wasn't going anywhere through that window. I wasn't going... I wasn't going to get through those sturdy bars. This window had bars too. The room was a prison. I looked up and down the street, hoping to attract the attention of a passerby. There was no one in sight. It was a needle-sharp dart with a flight of green and yellow feathers. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. It was the box that spider had crawled from. I wasn't gonna touch the box after that spider had been inside it. It was a soda fountain, perfect for mixing with drinks or squirting at clowns. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. In the cabinet's wooden door was a very small keyhole. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. It was a small cylinder which seemed to have exploded. It was a small metal cylinder. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. It was Nico's bag. It was a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. I'd already ransacked Nico's handbag, and besides which, the color didn't suit me. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush, and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Labano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. Inside the... The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. It was a small metal cylinder with a valve at one end. It was Nico's lipstick. It wasn't my color, and it reminded me of clowns. The pot contained a key. It was that itsy bitsy tequila worm. I really must remember to take it out of my pants before I send them to the laundry. The red and yellow pot had black decorative markings shaped like hands. Weird mutant hands, that is. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. What? Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. With a well-aimed squirt of his soda fountain, our unshakable hero saved the day. Now it was time to start looking for Nico. I wasn't gonna burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. The front door was made of hard wood, supported by a sturdy frame. 
It was a folded clipping taken from a newspaper. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for UBA's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was Ubier's bank statement. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The door was locked. I didn't fancy my chances of kicking this door down. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. Oh, garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. It was a small silver flask from which the man was topping up his glass. The man at the next table looked somehow familiar. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was? Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? I'm waiting for an acquaintance. Bon. And you have found another. Will you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen. I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently, he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. Hey, you. Quoi? I'd like a cup of coffee, if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. What's that you're drinking? It's wine. What do you make of this dart? Ah. I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft.
un café. Thanks. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me, I didn't sell it to him. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Look at this. A poison dart. Ah, oui. we? Sure. It's the real thing. Knock my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. Do you know a guy called André Lobineau? Oui. I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No. I have not seen him today. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you, but Nico's in trouble, Andre, deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her, and he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Oubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh, my God. You mean I could be in danger, too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? It was sent to her. From where? Who? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Oubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend Oubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Does Oubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? What can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank, the Glees Gallery. Take a look at this, Andre. It's a bank statement? Yeah, Professor Oubier's account. 
five large cash withdrawals in the space of three days, all from an automatic teller in Marseille. Suspicious, isn't it? You're even more crazy than you were before. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. It was a small silver flask from which the man was topping up his glass. What do you make of this news cutting? Ovenage supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, oh, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Tell me what you make of this note. From my years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you've got just about everything apart from the ponytail. Ever heard of Carol Climax, the movie star? Yes, but I don't care for the kind of movie she's made. It's smut like that which has caused the moral decline of the Western world. Is it true that Carol Climax was murdered by her husband? First I heard of it. I thought she just retired. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe, a highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. It was black, even though I was sure I'd asked for cream. Excuse me. What? I'm trying to find my girlfriend. She's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Yeah. It was our first day back together after many months. That's too bad. My God, that's depressing. The coffee was very bitter and only lukewarm. There was also an unpleasant coagulated lump at the bottom of the cup. That was undoubtedly the most disgusting cup of coffee I'd ever tasted in my life. Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. I couldn't believe it. The pots were marked at 5,000 francs each. As far as I could tell, the pots were almost identical to the one I'd found in Ubier's house. The Wasteland. Too minimalistic for too much money. Looked like a witch and a headless bust. I had seen better. Rectangles in a desolate landscape. Highly cubist. Pots, pots, and more pots, all hugely expensive.
spheres in a barren waste. Oh, very profound. I could see a pattern emerging in this artist's work. Pots, pots, and more pots. He was a pear-shaped guy with a fine display of multiple chins. He looked like an older version of Labano. The same supercilious expression, the same disdain in his eyes, and the same damned ponytail. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Yes, sir. May I help you? You're English? These days, one prefers to think of oneself as European. Uh, sure. Whatever you say. And how precisely may one assist you, sir? What I really wanted to ask you about was a black stone. A black stone? Yeah, it's a Mayan artifact, about as big as my hand. No, sir, one doesn't get much call for black stones. If it's Mayan artifact you're interested in, I have some rather exquisite pots. Yeah, I noticed. I've already got one of those. I'd like your opinion on this pot. Interesting. Would sir be interested in selling the article? That depends. How much would you give me for it? 300? Possible 325. What? Those other pots are priced at 5,000 francs each. Yes, but this is clearly the work of an inferior, degenerated culture. You mean it's English? Look, why don't you get a second opinion? From who? Mr. Lane, the world-renowned art critic and collector. He's an art critic? I thought there was a carnival in town. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Of course. His name is synonymous with Mayan art. A number of these artifacts were supplied by Oubier himself. Do you believe the story that Oubier murdered his wife? If it was true, who can blame him? She was an opportunist tramp. Well, that's what I heard. Have you seen any of Oubier's wife's films? Only one. Believe me, I was appalled, shocked, disgusted, and repulsed. Well, you sure got your money's worth. Last time I went to the movies, I wasn't even titillated. I suppose you have an import license for these relics? Of course. But that's not my problem, sir. The professor arranges all the shipping. We simply collect the items from the docks. Could you tell me which docks Professor Oubier uses to import the artifacts? Good God, no. I can't possibly reveal my commercial secrets. Do you get many Central American Indians in here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, this is Paris. Central America is several thousand kilometers southwest of here, straight across the Atlantic Ocean and turn left. You can't miss it. Well, as it happens, I saw some Central American Indians this very morning. Tourists, sir. Paris is full of them at this time of year. I have some questions I'd like to ask about those pots. The Mexican collection? Uh, certainly, sir. Where did you get them from? Mexico, of course. I think, sir, we'll find the price extremely reasonable. Hey, I'm not interested in buying them. Oh, I see. In that case, you'll excuse me. You're Lane, the critic, aren't you? Correct. Can't you see I'm busy? Busy? Doing what? Appreciating the art, or depreciating it. I have a reputation to uphold. I could tell this guy was going to be hard work. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Yes, of course. I was at his house earlier. If you're going to drop names, you could at least name one worth dropping. I thought Oubier was a well-respected man. Why, his last book was nothing but pseudo-intellectual claptrap. The demented ramblings of a drug-dependent has-been. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure but I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he serves this muck. Would you give me your opinion on this pot, sir? Hmm, yes, very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? You smashed my pot. Certainly, it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. What's the difference between my pot and all those other pots? Yours is broken. Why, you smug, pompous sloth. 
Sticks and stones, dear boy, sticks and stones. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage, and at the same time, get my revenge. I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something in my drink? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement over Gleese's wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. Lane doesn't think much of your choice of wine. Blasted nerve. The priest who sold it to me said it was a good year. That slob Lane just smashed my Mayan pot. Yes, he can be rather impulsive. He's drunk. If I were you, I'd throw him out before he breaks something. Oh, I couldn't do that. I found this news story referring to a total eclipse of the sun. Really, sir? Well, well. Fascinating. I didn't think he'd be interested. Allow me. He was out for the count. Fragments of priceless pots lay shattered on the floor. Glees wasn't happy, I could tell. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam packing, but pasted on the side was the remains of a label. Underneath the logo of a flying bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. Ubier was connected with Transglobal, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Transglobal label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. It was almost dawn when I arrived in Marseille. I traced Condor Transglobal to a desolate dockside. There was a glow of light at the window of the hut. It was a mean-looking guard dog. Here, boy. The watchman was big and bulgy, like a sack of potatoes. His flushed and bloated face wore a sleepy, amiable expression. It was a large bucket filled with coal. Something was bubbling in the watchman's saucepan. It was an old iron stove, which heated the hut and the watchman's dinner. It was a packet with a picture of a boxer dog on the front. It 
was a box of blank forms. Hi there. Hey, how long you been watching me? Well, I wasn't watching. You were looking. Oh, well, yeah, but I wasn't watching. What'd you want? Do you know what time it is? No, I don't wear a watch. As my dad used to say, I'm not into time, man. Well, you're too early. What time is it, anyhow? The big hand's on the floor. Why aren't you in bed? I can explain everything. Never mind, I ain't that interested. What time do you open the gates? Seven. Do you mind if I hang out here till the docks open? Please yourself, but you'll have a long wait. It's Sunday, and tomorrow is the start of the national holiday. Everything is closed for a month. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Does that dog belong to you? Nah, he comes with the job. I just feed him every now and then. More then than now, I'd say. What's the dog's name? 20. It's unusual for a dog. It's his registration number. Security dog number 20. That animal doesn't seem too hot for a guard dog. No? You haven't seen him in action. Doesn't look like he has the energy to wag his tail. Just like my wife. She's like a slug in a coma until she's annoyed. Then she's like a tiger with a rat up its ass. Sweet. Ever heard of Condor Transglobal? Sure. They have a warehouse here. Well, could I take a look? Not until after the holidays. Come back in a month. I have to make a delivery to Condor Transglobal. Where's your rig? Uh, about half a mile down the road. And you walked here? Jeez, are you some kind of nut? Nah, it was easy. I just put one foot in front of the other. Are you going to let me make my delivery? Not without the paperwork. You get the papers, you make your delivery, and I get a fat backhander. I was getting nowhere with the story about being a trucker. Do you know what kind of business Condor's involved in? I'm paid to guard the gate. Their business is none of mine. I'm looking for a young woman. At the docks? What kind of woman do you have in mind? You don't understand. It's my girlfriend I'm trying to find. Well, I ain't seen her. And you should tell her, the docks ain't no place for a young lady. They're dirty and they're dangerous. I'm certain my girlfriend was brought here when she was abducted. What? Your girl was kidnapped? Yeah. Struck down by an Indian with a poison dart. A poison dart, huh? I could tell he didn't believe me. This is the dart that the Indian shot at my girlfriend. Sheesh, that's pretty weird, but I don't see why you'd expect to find her here. I have these very exotic panties. Take them away, you pervert! Have you ever heard of Professor Ubie? Me? None of my friends are professors or anything like that. What's cooking? Beans. You know, a man can live on nothing but beans. Not this one. Don't you ever get tired of eating beans? Sure I do. What do you take me for? And what's the alternative? Peas. I can't eat them too often, though. They play hell with my digestion. Have you ever considered changing your diet? What's wrong with beans and beer? You need me to tell you? You're pumping out enough methane here to fill a dirigible. Take a look at this letter. That's sick. Did you write it? Oh, no. No, it's a letter from my girlfriend's admirer. If I was you, I'd smack him in the mouth. Well, that's not my style, but thanks for the advice. I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Can't wait. A short stick of wood floated near the edge of the landing stage. The stick had a hook on one end. I figured it was a boat hook. 
for hooking boats. Bobbing up and down in the oily water was the watchman's discarded beer bottle. The bottle was just out of reach. Nothing was going to get me into that water if I could help it. I just knew that boat hook would be useful for something. As for the bottle, even if I couldn't find a use for it, I'd cleaned up the dock a little. It was the beer bottle that slob of a watchman had dumped in the sea, now half full of filthy dock water. The label read, Surge, the beer that clears your head. The platform was held up by a hinged bracket. I couldn't figure out what it was for. Maybe it was part of a structure which no longer existed. The guard dog was staring at me with a hungry look in his eyes. The opening in the floor led up into the watchman's hut. It was the night watchman. It was a packet with a picture of a boxer dog on the front. I couldn't reach the documents. Excuse me. Huh? Who's there? The chimney was a metal pipe with a conical hat on top to stop the rain getting in. Ouch! That's hot! The panties would not have been thick enough to shield this level of heat. The bottle was half filled with water. Maybe it would cool the cone down enough to touch it. Now I could see into the pipe which formed the chimney. That chimney looked very exposed without its cone. Hmm. The bottle had blocked the chimney and the hut was filling up with smoke. Someone had once told me a piece of coal brought you luck. Who was I to argue with irrational superstition? It was a packet with a picture. The packet was full of dog biscuits. Baked beans in ketchup. Uh, no. 
Uh, no. A shabby old overcoat hung from a peg near the door. The box contained nothing but blank forms. I decided to keep the cone. You never know when a cone may come in useful. Hey, 20, come and get it, boy. I felt a slight twinge of conscience as I prepared to give the dog a dunking. It soon passed. As I'd expected, the dog could swim like a, well, like a dog. The gates were fastened with a heavy-duty padlock. I decided I would not be able to pick a five-barrel hardened steel heavy-duty padlock with a dart. Red Pont de Nord, fine wine producers. I didn't recognize the label. The clamp was held in a mechanism which forced its jaws open. I decided not to tamper with the clamp. Those jaws looked like it could snap shut at any moment. It read Condor Trans Global. I'd come to the right place. Now all I had to do was get inside. That door seemed to be the only way into the warehouse. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. Maybe there was a way in up there. It was a duct from a ventilation fan. The window looked like it hadn't been opened for many years. kidnapped Nico, and I had a score to settle. The guy was partly hidden behind a stack of crates. The room was filled with transglobal crates. It was a powerful fan. I couldn't reach the blades of the fan, which was just as well. If I'd stuck my fingers in there, I'd never be able to play guitar again.
That did the trick. The fan clunked and shorted out as its blades were mashed by the boat hook. Hey, you make any more noise, I break your arms. That bully needed to be taught a lesson. Garzak's already mad because we didn't get the stone. You give me any trouble, I'll tell him it was all your fault. Karzak? That must be his boss. Who is he? Police, we want to talk to you about abduction, arson, and attempted murder. You got a warrant? Sure I got a warrant. Open the door, I'll show you. You wait. That's got him scared and angry. The only interesting thing I found was a small brass key. There was a notice board beside the desk with an assortment of paperwork on it. Among the paperwork which adorned the notice board was something which caught my eye. It was a delivery note from Condor Transglobal, and the address was Coromonte City. A filing cabinet. It was locked. The little brass key didn't fit the lock. The room was filled with transglobal crates. All the crates were firmly sealed. Shoot. The little guy had a blowpipe. That confirmed my suspicions about what had happened to Nico. I waited for him to shoot me, but it didn't happen. Instead, he seemed to want to tell me something. Uh, what? What do you want? Uh, uh, he seemed excited, almost desperate. What did he want so bad? Hi, uh, I'm not going to hurt you. Cuaramonte. Is that where you're from? Cuaramonte City? Cuaramonte, Cuaramonte. Okay, okay. What have you done with my girlfriend? Huh? I am not leaving without her. Where is she? He didn't appear to understand me. Tell me what you've done with Nico, and I'll share these biscuits with you. I knew it sounded lame, trying to bargain with a box of doggy snacks. Besides, how was he to know how yummy they tasted? Do you know what this is? Peito. Lotzeka peito. Hinyakotla go inomoto. Hmm. 
This was the dart you used to knock out my girlfriend. If she's come to any harm, I will count you personally responsible. Not the capaid of nor. What does this key unlock? Huh? Hey, you're manacled. Who did this? That big thug? I'm gonna set you free, okay? Hey, come back here! The little guy had gone to ground amongst the stack of crates. just in time. Interrupting the beam of light kept the doors from closing and stopped anyone from using the elevator. But what now? It was the label I'd... F the label just wasn't sticky enough to stay in place. Nope. Nope. There. That would keep the doors from closing. The crate bore the familiar logo of Condor Transglobal, but no clues to its contents. I couldn't move the crate until I'd blocked the light beam with something else. I was wrestling with the small crate when I noticed the label on its side. Danger, live contents do not drop. The crate was labeled, Danger, live contents do not drop. There were small holes in the top and sides and scratchy noises coming from inside. It was a hydraulic hand cart. There wasn't enough room to move the handle. It was the elevator call button. An unmarked switch. Tempting. The statue looked as if it was Central or South American in origin. The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. It was a pulley attached to a long rail which ran the length of the building. It wasn't much use though. No rope. The short chain stopped the cuffs reaching from the statue to the winch. I realized the doors must lead to a loading platform high above the dockside. A sturdy beam was jammed across the doors. These doors were not going to open. There was no way to open that window. The window was not designed to open. I noticed a faint mark on the wooden floor. There was an arc-shaped scratch on the floor, as if a door had been opened in the nearby wall. My fingers traced the outline of a secret door in the wall. Then I found a small round stud, which was set flush to the surrounding wooden paneling. Just as I'd hoped, a secret room. Nico!
There, how are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Georges. How on earth did you find me? I knew Oubier had been in Marseille, but never mind about me. How about you tell me exactly what's going on, starting with that Mayan stone? I picked it up from one of Cossack's men in Paris. I was expecting a consignment of narcotics. Drugs? Yes. The proof I needed to expose Cossack's smuggling operation. I'd set it up to act as his courier, and once I had the proof, I planned to go straight to Inspector Mou. But instead of the dope I'd expected, they sent me that stone instead. And to find out more, I called Professor Oubier, who invited me to his mansion. At least, I thought it was Oubier. I don't get it. If Karzak's business is drugs, why is he so desperate to get his hands on that stone? Maybe it has some significance to the local people in Central America. It could be Karzak's means of getting them to work for him. Anyway, we've got to get out of here. Nico, wait! It was a grotesque little statue of a figure carrying a shield and a spear. It was the masking tape that had been used on Nico. I decided to keep the masking tape. It was bound to be of some use to me. We can't use the elevator. If that thug Pablo is recovered, he'll be waiting for us. We've got to do something. Where does that door lead to? I'm not sure. Okay, tell me what you know about Condor. Condor Transglobal exports Aztec and Mayan relics from Central America to Europe. But that's just a cover for the real business. Drug smuggling. What proof do you have? Nothing yet. Do you know where Condor is based? In Central America. A place called Cuaramonte. I saw that name on a docket downstairs. Tell me about this Karzak guy. Well, I saw him for only a few minutes, but he frightens me. I got the impression that Pablo was nervous when he was around too. His eyes, they're like a wild animal's, like a tiger. That's what scared me most about him. He looked so unpredictable and dangerous. Did you know Oubier's wife was a film star? No, I didn't know he was married. What happened to her? She died. In mysterious circumstances, apparently. How mysterious? I heard she was murdered, possibly by Oubier himself. A murderer, huh? André said he was something of a celebrity. Did I hear you refer to Inspector Moo? Yes, you remember him? Of course I do. But I thought he was dead. Oh no, he reappeared after the broken sword case had blown over. When he found out who was in with the Neo Templars, he went into hiding. Mu knew more than was good for him. Does he know about our involvement with the case? If he does, he's not telling. Still, he got a sudden promotion. Did that Indian guy mistreat you? If you forget about the abduction, verbal threats, and bondage, no. Well, what about the little guy? I don't think he knows where he is or what he's doing here. The big guy, Pablo, he brought Titipoco from the jungle. Titi what? Titipoco. That's what I heard Pablo call the dwarf. Do you recognize this? Is that the dart which knocked me out? That's right. I kept it as a souvenir. Have you any idea who this little statue is supposed to be? I'm not very well acquainted with Mayan deities, Georges. But whatever his name, he sure is ugly. I found these in your bag. Oh, they were a gift. I know, I read the note. God knows what was going through Andre's mind. I think that's quite plain enough. Look. The little guy downstairs was chained up with these. That must have been Pablo's doing. I don't blame him, though. That little guy is dangerous. You're still sore about that poison dart? Of course I'm sore.
these doors were not going to open. Hopefully, the tape would prevent those doors from closing and stop the Indian from being able to call the elevator. rope wasn't long enough to reach the pulley. The pallet rose about six inches off the floor, and I said a silent prayer to whoever had discovered the power of hydraulics. What on earth are you doing? Trying to raise the statue so I can hook it to that pulley. Is that really going to help us? I like to keep myself occupied in times of stress. The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. It was too heavy for me to move on my own. Could you give me a hand to push this statue? What for? This, my dear, is our passport to freedom. If you say so, dear. Okay, push! <laughs> Great teamwork. Nice to be working with you again, Mr. Stobart. The doors had been smashed open. A cable stretched way out across the docks to a building in the distance. I thought about hanging from the cable with my bare hands, but it was too far to the other end of the cable to escape that way. That isn't it at all. Uh, no. Nico, I have a great idea. Have you been? Never mind that. Do you have the Mayan stone? Maybe I have, but uh... Don't argue, André. Give the stone to George. Well, of course. If you say so, Nicole. Thank you so much, André. George, he told me you'd been kidnapped, my dear. I'm glad to see he was mistaken. Oh, but it was true. If it hadn't been for George, I wouldn't be here now. Uh, it's not finished yet. Karzak's thugs will be back for that stone, you can bet. The best lead that we have is Coromonte City. Coromonte? It's in Central America. That's where Ubier gets his artifacts. That's all we needed to know. Come on, Georges. Coromonte, the traveler's rear entrance to Central America. Well, that's how it was translated in the brochure. We didn't know what we were looking for, but the offices of Condor Transglobal seemed a good place to start.
Hey, it's market day. I don't see any cabs. Let's ask someone how to get to Cuaramonte City. Okay. Keep your eyes peeled for any sign of Condor Transglobal. Labano tells me he's been seeing a lot of you. We meet sometimes for lunch, a drink. After you'd gone back to the States, I was pretty lonely, you know. Lonely? You must have been desperate. Couldn't you just visit the zoo or something? Would you like a biscuit? Gourmet dog? Have you been eating those things, Georges? Sure, they're great. Guess what this is. Go on, guess. It's wrought iron, probably from a chimney stack on an old stove. Uh, well, I suppose it could be. How did she know that? <laughs> My grandfather used to work in a foundry. Take a look at this, Nico. That's disgusting, Georges. Why are you carrying it around with you? I don't know. I just can't seem to part with it. Take a look at this. An eclipse of the sun. Why the sudden interest in astronomy? I found the cutting in Ubier's house. Apparently, it's only visible from Central America. Take a look at this. Mon Dieu! Where did you get that kind of money? It's not mine. I found that statement at Ubier's house. Do you have any theories about this stone? I think that design represents a dog, a Mexican dog. So, this is the sacred Chihuahua stone? Sheesh. <laughs> it was that itsy bitsy tequila worm. Hey, cheer up, guys. What's with the long faces? Our pipe player has been arrested and thrown in jail. Poor Miguel. He never broke the law in his life. Why was Miguel put in jail? For playing folk music. What? It's true, senor. He insisted on playing traditional Cuaramonte music, even though it's illegal. Why don't you try playing a tune to cheer yourselves up? No. We should be looking for real jobs. We could earn ten times as much down the mines. My cousin Ramirez was earning eight pesos an hour before he lost his legs in the accident. Tell me about the accident at the mine. There was an explosion at Teoculcan. Thirty miners were buried alive. They got some of them out, though. Two of them including your cousin, and they left half of him behind. Would either of you guys care for a biscuit? A dog biscuit, senor? Are you trying to insult us? No, really, they're good. We'll take your word for it. Have you any idea what this is? No, senor. Me neither. What do you make of this little worm? No good. It's dead. Sure it's dead. You think I'd carry it around in my pocket if it wasn't? Have you seen anything like... I, the hungry chief. Why are you carrying that thing around with you, senor? Don't you know who it is? No. Do tell me. It is Tetzcatlipoca, god of death and blood. Hmm. Take a look at the design on this label. I have seen that before. Where? There was a ship flying a flag just like that. When did you see this ship? Three months ago. It was here, at the docks. What was the ship with the Condor flag carrying? I don't know, senor. We weren't allowed near the docks. That's right. Usually we meet the ships when they tie up. We play to the tourists. Well. 
when the Condor ship came in, we were told to go away. Do you guys know anything about a total eclipse? What is it? It's like when the sun is hidden by the moon. It's crazy. My cousin Alfredo swears he saw it happen once. But that was after he stupidly consumed a cocktail of peyote and antibiotics. Now, I like most animals, but experience had made me wary of goats, and cats, and dogs. What, uh, what, what was that? It's a lump of lucky coal. A car, car coal? I, I would have, uh, I would have preferred uh, chocolate. Uh, any, any uh, flavor, so long as it uh, hasn't got uh, uh, mar marzipan in it. God, I, I, I hate uh, marzipan. You can talk. I, I mean, you're a talking goat. K keep, keep your voice down. The, the, this is, is between you and me, right? Well, I guess so. Now, I, 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 I mean it. You, 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 you tell anyone you've spoken to me, and, and, and you'll be cursed. Those things are gourds, aren't they? See. Si. Hey, find the footwear, lady. Hi there. Uh, what have you got for sale? Okay. I said, what have you got? Oh, never mind. It was an uninteresting little wooden hut with an armed goon outside it. Inside the hut was a chair and a small table. Inside the Hi. You want to buy something? Uh, no, not really. I got cabbages. Buy a cabbage, senor. I don't think so. I didn't come all this way to buy vegetables. Listen, have you heard of Condor Trans Global? No. Buy a cabbage. I'll give you a discount on both purchases. I'm not into cabbages. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Aye, that's Catlipoca. Put it away, senor. That Catlipoca brings nothing but evil. The poor guy was so freaked, he didn't even mention his cabbages. See ya. Welcome to Guaramonte. Thanks. Can we get a cab to the capital? This is the capital, Guaramonte City. When's the next ship out of here? But, senor, don't you like our beautiful country? Oh, yeah. It's like a little piece of paradise right here on Earth. Then why you want to leave? I'm just plain homesick, like it says in the song. A word of warning, senor. If you feel like bursting into song, bite your tongue. Huh? There are official restrictions on music in Cuaramonte. How come music is restricted in Cuaramonte? It is part of a great cultural enrichment campaign. Traditional Caramonte music is considered unsuitable for these fast-moving times. Nuestra Señora has decreed that only one category of music is suitable. What's that? Easy listening. We've had enough. We're going back to the ship. Okay. You show me your brown card? Huh? What brown card is that? The official exit visa.
Do you have crabs? No, only fish. Nice fish. Thanks. If by some remote chance I ever need a fish, I'll be back. Do you recognize this statue? Si, senor. It is very, very bad luck. Uh, that is Tezcatlipoca, the night hunter. I know, but I don't believe in luck, good or bad. You may not now, but you will. The guy looked scared out of his wits. Go away. George Stobart, well of all the... Mrs. Henderson. Boy, this is some coincidence, huh? When you've been married to a fruitcake like Duane as long as I have, you stop believing in coincidence. I'd met Pearl and Duane on the other side of the globe in Syria. He was an army veteran who suspected he was working for the CIA, but wasn't sure. She was less obviously deranged. Is Duane here with you, Mrs. Henderson? Why, sure, I couldn't leave him home alone. Since Duane came back from the war, we couldn't bear to be apart. So, where is he now? We ain't speaking. Why aren't you speaking to Duane? Because he's an old spoil sport sarapus. I want to visit one of those old pyramid places, but Duane says he has to stay in town. Right, and you don't want to go on your own. Well, there's no point in going to the pyramid if there's no one around to take my picture. Is Duane still working for the CIA? If he is, he doesn't know it. He's what they call a snoozer. Uh, don't you mean a sleeper? No, this is different. He used to think he worked for them, but the psychotherapy cured him of that. What he doesn't realize is that now he really does work for them. At least that's the way I understood it. What brings you to Quaramonte, Pearl? What takes me just about anywhere is the market. You drove 2,000 miles to go shopping? Shopping is my role in the economy of the great design, George. What do you make of this stone, Pearl? Oh, that's pretty. What? I believe it's a coyote. Well, it sure is cute. I was surprised she didn't ask me where she could buy one. What does this mean to you, Pearl? What cute little feathers. Why, well, if you had two of those, they'd sure make nice earrings. This isn't intended for frivolous personal adornment, Pearl. It's a dart tipped with a fast-acting, muscle-numbing poison. Pardon me, I stand corrected, honey. Sometimes I got the feeling that communication with Pearl was like sending signals out into space. Maybe if you waited long enough, you'd get an intelligent answer back, but it was a long shot. What do you make of this statue, Pearl? Wee, that's a spitting image of Dwayne's brother Sheridan. A little less body hair, maybe, but it's him all right. Look at this, Pearl. A tequila worm. Don't you bring that thing anywhere as near me, honey. I swear I'll scream like a hog on a hot plate. Take a look at this news cutting, Pearl. You'll have to read it to me, George. I left my specs in a gay bar in Santa Barbara. Well, it's about an eclipse of the sun, which is due to occur in a few weeks' time. You'd think the government would warn us about these kind of things. Uh, uh, it's not dangerous or anything. Apparently, the best place to view the eclipse is right here in Cuaramonte. Oh, my. She didn't appear to be the slightest bit interested. Catch you later, Pearl. Hey, Nico! I have done just as I have been instructed, Professor. With the mine closed down, there'll be no one around to observe your excavations. Ah, I have visitors. Just remember what I told you, General. There's really no need to make a martyr out of that man.
I'm sorry to keep you waiting, senor. Welcome to Quarmonte. Thanks. My name's George Stobart from California. But what is this? An angel come down to earth. Nicole Collard. Enchanté, mon général. Pardon me, senorita, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, look, we'd like to ask you a few questions. You've come to the right place, senor. Uh, tourist information. General Graciento, at your service. This is the tourist office? It says police on the sign outside. It is both. Senor, I am a man of many parts. I can see that, General. Have you heard of a guy called Karzak? No. No, I never heard of him. I hear there was an accident at the mine a few months ago. That's correct. A lot of men killed, weren't there? A few. Thirty? <laughs> Barely one percent of the working population. Is it true there's a restriction on music in Cuaramonte? Yes, there is. An emergency measure introduced by Nuestra Senora. Folk music is a link with the past for some of these people. Take away their musical roots and what do they got left? Easy listening. You think easy listening could replace a musical heritage hundreds of years old? Why not? It happened in your country. Are there any ruins around the city? Of course, Senor. Cuaramonte has everything. I have a friend who wants to visit an historical site. Ronaldo will only be too pleased to conduct a guided tour. When he's dealt with today's paperwork, of course. Who was the guy you were talking to when we arrived? Professor Oubier. A visitor, senor, like yourselves. Did you say Oubier? Si, senor. Professor Oubier. A French archaeologist. What's Oubier doing in Quaramonte? Researching our rich and glorious past, senor. The professor is planning an expedition to some Mayan ruins. He came to see me to get an excavation permit. We've had enough of Cuaramonte and we want out. Am I stopping you? The guy at the docks tells me I need an exit visa. Ask Ronaldo. He'll make the arrangements. That's what he's here for. Would you like a biscuit? Are you trying to bribe me? Well, every man has his price. Mine is more than a dog cookie, Senor Stobart. Have you ever seen anything like this before? That's a native carving, isn't it? Where did you get it? We picked it up in the market, as a souvenir. What do you think of these panties, General? Oh boy, fabuloso! They're yours if you'll tell me all you know about Karzak. I told you. I never heard of the guy. Do I get the panties now? I told you all I know. You told me nothing. Take a look at this label. Si, senor. Condor Transglobal. Can you tell me where to find their offices? No, senor. I never heard of them, and neither did Ronaldo. Are you sure you never heard of Condor? Oh, yes. The company is registered here, in Cuaramonte City. You are mistaken, senorita. The musicians out in the square say that a ship flying the Condor flag was birthed here. They are simple peasants. They will go along with anything you say in the hopes of parting you from your money. Condor is run by Karzak, isn't it? Wrong again, senor. Karzak has nothing to do with anything called Condor, whoever he is. Do you keep a record of companies registered in Cuaramonte? Of course, senorita. Unfortunately, all the records were destroyed by a flash flood. Do you know anything about the forthcoming eclipse, General? Such things do not interest me, senor. I'll be back. Hi, I'm George Stobart. Hello, senor. How can I help you? Are there any ancient pyramids near Cuaramonte? Si, senor. But it's not very impressive. It's in ruins. That's perfect. Would you be willing to give a guided tour of the ruins? I can't. The general would have a fit if I left all this paperwork. 
I'm trying to get out of Quaramonte. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd be able to buy back half my family. Never mind them. What about my visa? We don't take visa. I didn't ask if you take a visa. I want you to give me a visa. I can't help you, senor. I don't understand these things. Would you like a gourmet dog snack biscuit? I would love one, senor. But I would have a problem with my teeth. Toothache? No, senor. If the general catches me eating on duty, he'll knock them out. Do you recognize this statue? Tezcatlipoca. The night wind. Take it away, senor. That stone is cursed. You know anything about this eclipse? No, senor. El general keeps me in the dark about most things. So long. I wasn't going to try investigating the passage while the general was sat there. That man we saw talking to the general was Oubier. Didn't you recognize him? I never met him, remember? The guy I called in Paris claimed to be Oubier, but he sounded nothing like the man in the police station. Maybe the professor really is innocent. Nah, it's too much of a coincidence that he's here in Quaramonte. I'd asked him all I'd wanted to for now. The television was showing what appeared to be a low-budget soap. A tall man with long blonde hair was shouting at a woman who was naked apart from a towel. I decided to leave the television switched on. It was a computer monitor with some kind of outdated game displayed on it. I didn't have time to get sidetracked by playing computer games. A couple of special offer letters were strewn across the desk. I had no need for junk mail, especially someone else's. It was the map which the general had been showing to Professor Oubier. Senor, leave that chart alone. Do you have a map of Quaramonte? A map? I'm sorry, senor, but I don't. What about the one on the wall? Ah, that is an archaeological survey map, senor. Not suitable for tourists. I'll be back. Why did you show him the stone? I thought maybe he might know something about it. Well, he does now, for sure. He knows we have it. Did you notice that chart on the police station wall? Yes. It looked like a map to me, but I couldn't make out the details. Whatever it was, the general didn't want us to see it. You came on a little strong with the general. I was merely flattering his ego, Georges. Every man has his Achilles heel. Maybe. But that guy's weakness isn't in his foot. It was that suspect archaeologist, Oubier. It was a beat-up old wreck of an army truck. Stealing trucks wasn't my style. Professor Oubier? Yes. Who are you? My name is Stobart. George Stobart. I thought that face was familiar. Remember me, George? Dwayne Henderson. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, just a moment. I have a few questions to ask the professor here. Does the name Karzak mean anything to you? Yes, I know him. In fact, if it wasn't for Karzak, I wouldn't be here. What? He's financing my expedition. Tell me about your wife, Professor. Please, I... I don't want to talk about her. 
Maybe you don't, but I do. Why was she known as the Little Dachshund? It was just a silly pet name I used to call her. Somehow some damned reporter found out. What do you know about my girlfriend's abduction? I don't know what you're talking about. She was invited to your mansion in Paris. Not by me, she wasn't. I haven't been home for nearly seven months. Have you ever employed a Central American butler or servant? I've never employed any kind of servant, monsieur. Would you like a biscuit? No, thank you. You should, they're good. Mm, I can't get enough of these things. Can you tell me anything about this stone? Where did you get that? That's my business. How much do you want for it? It's not for sale. Can you identify this statue, Professor? Oh, yes. Tezcatlipoca, the Lord of Darkness. A Central American god, right? A supreme deity. Tezcatlipoca means, literally, smoking mirror. There. You see the mirror shield in his left hand? The Mayans believed he could look into the mirror and see into the hearts of men. He was the wind which came howling in the night in search of victims. And victims they gave him by the thousand. Human sacrifices? Men, women, children, animals, anything that bled. The steps of his temple ran red with the blood of sacrifices. The Mayans have a legend that says he'll return one day. I hope I'm not around to see it. Do you see this label? Yes. It refers to a company named Condor. What of it? I traced that company here, to Cuaramonte. Do you know where I can find the offices of Condor Transglobal? The company no longer exists. They went bankrupt recently. I have proof that you are directly involved with Condor. I used them as shippers to transport artifacts to a gallery in Paris. Beyond that, I have no connection with the company, which, as I said, no longer exists. Do you know anything about this eclipse, Professor? Of course. It's not the reason I'm here in Cuaramonte, but I'm looking forward to seeing it all the same. What's your interest in the eclipse, Professor? Oh, it's purely a layman's curiosity. History is my subject, not astronomy. But I've been fascinated by the movements of the heavenly bodies since I was a child. I wouldn't miss a total eclipse for the world. Does the eclipse have some special significance for you? For me? No. For the ancient Mayans, it marked the end of the Fifth Age. Perhaps we should be celebrating. Ah, no. The end of each age heralds destruction on a global scale. The fifth is the final age, ending in the total destruction of the Earth. Take a look at this, Professor. What have you got to say about that? Where did you get this? Never mind that. How do you explain these withdrawals? I left my financial affairs in the hands of my secretary. Including the withdrawal of funds in cash from your personal account? I trust Gwyneth implicitly. And why Marseille? Why the very place my girlfriend was taken? That's obvious, Stobart. We are both the victims of the same devious plot. Yeah, what plot? I have no idea. Are you still working for you know who? Who's that, George? You know I'm retired. Oh, nothing. Uh, forget it. I confused you with somebody else. Oh, I do that all the time. Do you think the general was involved with Condor? Hell no. And if he's a general, I'm a Buddhist. No, that fella's just a mouthpiece for the real power in Guaramonte. So the general is nothing but a puppet? He's like Pinocchio before he met the Blue Rinse Fairy. Strictly strings and wood. Who's pulling the strings? His mother, better known as La Presidenta, the dictator. Does the name Karzak mean anything to you? Sounds like a comic book villain to me, son. He's the man behind Condor and the rat who kidnapped Nico. You know, 
The first time I met you, I was deeply impressed with your naive simplicity. I said to Pearl, if we ever had kids, I would have wanted a boy like George. But I underestimated you, son. Did you know that traditional music is illegal in Caramonte? Is that so? Seems reasonable to me. No, really. The leader of the band in the square has been in prison just because of the music he played. I don't know who you've been talking to, but that fella, Miguel, he's an agitator. What's the real reason the musician was in prison? Handed out subversive literature at the mines. That so-called general was waiting for Miguel when he got back into town. Marched him off to jail at gunpoint on a charge of inciting a riot. I spoke to Pearl earlier. Yeah? Did she mention that we had a kind of falling out? Yes, she did. She'll get over it. Did you drive all the way down here? Hell no. Pearl did the driving while I followed the maps. The way she handled the wheel, you think she'd been trucking half her life. What's in the truck, Duane? Oh, uh, just camping equipment. Sleeping bags and tents. Me and Pearl always hankered after a taste of the great outdoors. Aren't you worried about camping out in the tropical jungle? We had a trial run in West Virginia. This'll be a breeze in comparison. Would you like a biscuit, Duane? Oh, no. Those gourmet dog snacks bring me out in a rash. You've tried them? They were on special offer. Pearl bought a whole crate. When I asked her if she was thinking of keeping a dog, too, she just laughed. Would you like to borrow my lucky piece of coal, Dwayne? What's so lucky about it? Well, we made it to Cuaramonte in one piece. When you've been here a few days, you won't look on that as luck. Do you know anything about a shipping company called Condor Transglobal? I never heard of it, son. What do you think of these panties, Dwayne? Lord, hot stuff, George. You buy those for your girl? No. A guy we knew in Paris bought him for her. Oh, you're a threesome then. Why are you looking at me like that, George? Forget it. Hi, I'm George Stobart. What can you tell me about the mining company? The general closed down one of their mines after the explosion. Lots of folks lost their lives. I was lucky. I only lost my legs. Can you tell me anything about this stone? That's obsidian. It's a volcanic rock which has cooled so fast that... Yeah, yeah, look, I'm not interested in geology. You're not? I suppose you want to know about the carved picture on it. That's right. Then the guy you should talk to is the professor. He's over there, talking to the bozo in the truck. Do you know what this statue represents? Should do. I used to carve things like that to sell to tourists. But it scared people around here, so I stopped. Do you recognize the design on this label? Why, sure. That's the Condor Transglobal Shipping Company logo. Do they have an office in Cuaramonte? No, but they ship out from here. That's what I thought. Did you see the ship with the Condor flag? Mm, no. But the dock is just the other side of the square. Might as well be the other side of the moon. Have you heard about the eclipse of the sun? Sure, I'm having a party to celebrate it. Drop by. Really? Sure. Plenty of food, plenty of wine, and everyone's invited, except the general. Why don't you want the general at your party? Because if he comes, he'll bring those damned music albums from the 70s. What do you think of these panties? Awesome. You wear them? Uh, no. Someone sent them to my girlfriend. Thoughtful.
tell me about the general. You know, the guy in charge around here. We don't want to talk about him, senor. How come? No one can hear you. Well, only that old goat. In Cuaramonte, we have a saying. Don't tell your old goat what you don't want your wife to know. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. It was a portrait of La Presidenta. There was nothing else I wanted to talk to Nico about at that time. Hey, Nico! Hola, senora. Hi. We were wondering... I was talking to the lady, Chico. Hi. My name is Nicole Collard. Concha Garcia. How can I help you, sister? The corporation I represent is considering a major investment in Cuaramonte. Your advice, as the head of an obviously successful concern, is precisely what I'm after. My assistant, Mr. Stobart, has a few questions he'd like to ask you. Can you tell me about the accident at the mine? Accident? It was sabotage. Somebody wanted my mine closed down for good. Do you have any evidence that the mine was sabotaged? Not yet, but I'll get to the bottom of it. There'd been trouble at that mine for several months. The workforce was getting smaller every day. Someone had started a rumor among the men that the mine was cursed. Now the entire operation has been closed down. Where's the site of the mine? Several days upriver at a remote area known as Teoculcan. Do you know Professor Ubie? Yes. I understand he is about to embark on an archaeological expedition. He hired some equipment from me earlier today. I overheard him talking to the general. I think they're working together. What? If I'd known that, I wouldn't have hired out the equipment. Now, why would the general be interested in an archaeologist? Have you heard of a man named Karzak? No. Who is he? He's the reason we came to Cuaramonte. We think he's running a drug ring. Well, I hope you find him, but I've never heard the name before. Would you like a dog biscuit? Would you like a smack in the mouth, Chico? Does this stone mean anything to you? I think it is a spirit stone carved by a Mayan priest, no? I don't know which of their many gods it represents. Can you tell me anything about this statue? It is Tezcatlipoca, the god of death and pestilence. That fetish would be considered by many to be a bad omen. Do you recognize the icon on this label? Condor Transglobal. Did the company operate here in Caramonte? Yes, they ran an old container ship, the Mayan Princess. Do you know who owned Condor Transglobal? I have no idea. Have you heard about the forthcoming eclipse? I don't take much interest in things like that. One of the boys might know about it. Would you be interested in these panties? They look about your size. Is that your best line, Chico? I'm serious. They were an unwanted gift. Put them away before you get overexcited. You see this? It's my lucky piece of coal. What's so lucky about it? I'm not sure yet. Nice buns. Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Consolidated Mining. 
If you are planning to stay in Cuaramante City, may I recommend the Consolidated Mining Experience, an interactive hands-on tour of one of our deepest mines, with talking tour guides available in three different languages. A tour of a mine? Well, this is a mining company. What else did you expect? Do you know anything about the eclipse that's due soon? Me? No, senor. Do you know where I could find Senor Karzak? No, senor. How come you're not wearing any pants? I feel more alert without them. A kind of perky. And your boss doesn't mind? She suggested it. A disgustingly handsome man. I couldn't understand why the female owner had surrounded herself with men like this. The guy was working away like an automaton. Ever hear of a guy called Karzak? No, sir. Did you know there's an eclipse of the sun in a few weeks' time? Yeah, Joe told me about it. He's having a party and we're all invited. Me and the boys are dressing up as evil monks. Yeah? Cool. Do you know anything about the eclipse? Yes, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I heard it's going to be pretty spectacular. It's in a few weeks' time, isn't it? Nine days. Thanks. Ever heard of a guy called Karzak? No. Are you looking forward to the eclipse of the sun? Not especially. Are you? I don't know. I've never seen one. All I know about eclipses is that you shouldn't try to view them with the naked eye. Please, go away and let me get on with my work. Ever heard of a guy called Karzak? Can't you see I'm busy? If I don't finish this stock report, the boss will be mad as hell. Keep out of there. That's where the explosives are stored. There was nothing else I wanted to talk to Nico about at that time. I had nothing else to talk about. I hear you drove all the way to Cuaramonte in a truck. That's right. You would not believe the state of some of those roads. Makes me damn right sad to think there's still some places you can't reach in an automobile. In this day and age, you'd think there'd be decent highways just about anywhere folk choose to go. Have you met the guy who calls himself the General? No, I haven't. Is he a real general? I guess so. He wears a lot of medals on his chest. The wrong side of his chest. At least for any army I'd ever seen. Catch you later, Pearl. Hey, Nico!
There was nothing else. I'd asked him all I'd wanted to for now. Senor. Sorry, I forgot. I wasn't going to try investigating the passage while the general was sat there. There was nothing else up. There was nothing. I had no more to talk to her about. Stealing trucks wasn't my style. Maybe I'm wrong, but you seem kind of evasive when I asked you about what you had in that truck before. Damn right I was being evasive. I couldn't talk in front of the foreign national, see? George, I'm on a top secret classified mission for Uncle Sam. This truck is a rolling bomb. 400 pounds of nitrate fertilizer with a plastic initiator. They'll hear the bang in China. Gee, I'm really looking forward to this. Is Miguel the reason you're here? Pretty smart, George. I was supposed to make contact with him. By the time I found him, though, he was in jail. I've been trying to figure out a way to get him out since then. Sounds good to me. Count me in. Good man, George. All I need is a detonator. How come you brought a truckload of explosives but no detonator? Call me old-fashioned, but I say packing trunks is woman's work. I left the packing to Pearl and I can't find a darn thing. Just hope she remembered to bring my denture polish. I'd sure hate to arrive back in the States with tar on my teeth. Have you really never heard of Condor? Of course I have, son. Matter of fact, it was old Dwayne's investigations scared him off. Did you find any evidence of Condor's drug smuggling operations? Drugs? Hell no. Condor was a cover for the illegal export of Mayan artifacts. So who was behind Condor Transglobal? It was registered in the name of Edan. Did you get the guy? I don't think he ever existed. Edan backwards spells Nady, Spanish for nobody. Did you know that the truck was full of explosives? Whatever gave you that idea, as if I couldn't guess. Your husband, he was exaggerating, wasn't he? Sometimes I wonder how I'm gonna cope with Dwayne's over-fertile imagination. Do you know where I could buy a detonator? Did Dwayne put you up to this by any chance? Oh, I get it. This is to detonate the truckload of explosives, right? Hey, come on, I was kidding. <laughs> Did you think I was serious? I know what you boys are like when you get together and make plans. Dwayne says he could solve all the world's problems if he had enough missiles. Catch you later, Pearl. I had nothing else to talk about.
There was nothing else I wanted to talk to Nico about at that time. Do you have any kind of detonating device in stock? Sure. They're kept in that cupboard. I don't suppose you have one spare? I can't simply give you a device like that, no without a damn good reason. The General has a chart in his office, which he was discussing with Ubie. Perhaps that chart will tell us where they're heading. Maybe, but I can't get anywhere near it while the General and his sidekick are there. Hey! Stay out of that cupboard. Could you distract the general while I took a look at that chart? You're kidding. Did you see the way he was leering at me? Yeah. You'd make a great snake charmer. Come on. Five minutes is all I need. Well, maybe. But it's your hairbrain scheme. You do the talking. My girlfriend has a favor she wants to ask you, General. For you, my dear. Anything. I've changed my mind. Oh, no, you haven't. She's embarrassed about asking you for an interview, General. An interview with me? Fabuloso! Well, I... I, I want to write a story about you. You hear that, Ronaldo? An exclusive glossy spread about your beloved general. Si, senor general. Look after things here. I'm going back to my apartment and I don't want to be disturbed. I'll get you for this, George Toba. Don't worry. If you're gone for more than a couple of hours, I'll come and get you. A couple of hours? No, 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 senor. The general said nobody must see that chart. He won't know unless you tell him. <laughs> you don't know him, senor. He will worm it out of me as easily as he de-waxes his ear. Okay, okay. I'd have to get rid of him. I'd still have to figure out how to get rid of Ronaldo before I went down there. A couple of special... I had no need for junk mail. The safe was undoubtedly locked. I had no more to talk to her about. It was one of the windows of the jail. The cell was vacant. There was a forlorn looking guy asleep on the floor of the jail. It was Miguel, the pipe player. Hey, Miguel! He didn't hear me.
I'd like to visit your prisoner. Condemned prisoners aren't allowed visitors. Condemned? To death. He is to be executed. Knowing my luck, I will probably have to shoot him myself. Amnesty International is going to hear about this. I thought Miguel was arrested for playing the wrong kind of music. Si, senor, he was. And that carries the death penalty? No, no, no. You think we're crazy? While being questioned, he confessed to being an anti-government agent. Would you take my friend to the ruins now the general's gone? I'd be honored, senor. Thanks. I'll go get her. I've made the arrangements for your visit to the temple, Pearl. Oh, that's just great, George. Why don't you come too, honey? I'd love to, but right now I have to save the world. Listen, sweetie, I'm looking for an official guide to take me to the old pyramid. For a lovely lady, I would go to the ends of the earth. For you, I will go as far as the pyramid and back. But what about your husband? What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Let's go, Beanpole. As Pearl and Ronaldo set out for the ruined pyramid, I prepared to search the police station. The filing cabinet was probably locked. A couple of sp I had known. It looked like a geological survey map showing the land to the southeast of Cuaramonte City. About 60 miles inland and upstream was an area marked Teocolcan. It was Miguel, the musician. I'm George Stobart. You're Miguel the musician, aren't you? Ex-musician, senor. My career is finished. Ah, going to jail could be the boost your career needed. Senor, I would rather die than live with this shame. Have you heard of a guy called Karzak? Yes. The old man spoke of him. The foreigner? Professor Ubier? That's right. This man Karzak is Ubier's boss. Why is that noose hanging from the bars? Renaldo strung it up for me to hang myself. Don't cry for me, Senor Stubbard. When I am dead, the goddess will take my soul to rest in paradise. I couldn't reach the noose. It was a length of rope knotted in a hangman's noose. I had nothing else to talk about. I got a good look at that chart in the police station. It's a map of Cuaramonte. Does it tell us where Ubier is heading? Yeah, a place called Teocolcan. That's the site of the mine. I wonder why they're being so secretive about Ubier's plans. One thing's for sure. If the general's involved, they're up to no good. I'd like to talk to that musician Miguel. Take the detonator and get him out of that jail.
Stealing trucks, what? Here is the detonator, Dwayne. Keep your voice down, George. You want everyone to know. You'd best go and warn Miguel that the U.S. Cavalry's on the way. Okay. Hey, Miguel. What is it? What is happening? We're getting out of here. Who's we? They've sent the Delta Force. Nope. The Impossible Missions Force. Don't make me sick. Much better. Who then? A retired greetings card salesman from Ohio. I'm doomed. You're not the only one. I should have known you'd be trouble the moment I saw you. Look, I can explain everything. Get in that cell. Now. And what if I refuse? He'll shoot you. Okay, here I am, going quietly into the cell. Very wise, North Americano scum. One of the reasons I hate guns so much is the way they make people so damned impolite. I hope you're enjoying your vacation, Senor Stobart. Ah, go polish your weapon, Ronaldo. This was part of your plan, right? Well, in a manner of speaking, no. I was all out of ideas. It was up to Nico now. So, here we are. You've changed. I thought I would slip into something more comfortable. The stench of cheap cologne rolled over me like tear gas. So, what do you want to know about me? Ask and I will answer. I will deny you nothing. I am a very giving person. How nice for your friends. Your eyes are glittering like stars. His damn cologne was making my eyes water. I was running out of sofa. As spirited as you are beautiful, I admire that. As long as he admired it from afar. A lava lamp, hip in a retro way. I had no doubt the general thought it was hip full stop. I didn't want the lava lamp. It was a portrait of some thug in a uniform. I didn't want the picture. A stuffed swordfish. On close inspection, I noticed that the swordfish was peppered with machine gun bullet holes. The general was a real sportsman and no mistake. Cutting edge technology. In 1978, at any rate. I didn't want to watch a lot of tawdry soap operas. The door represented the escape route. Is that a lava lamp? Sure, it's more impressive in the dark. I'll close the blinds. No, no, don't do that. Not on such a beautiful day. Big fish. Catch it yourself? Catch it? <laughs> Fishing poles are for children. Then how did... Are those bullet holes? Two magazines on full automatic. It put up quite a fight. I, um, love your TV. Oh, yeah. Cool, no? Who's the guy with the hat and the fat cigar? My mother.
Mom, what is going on here? Uh, nothing, Mom. I was... Uh, 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 I'm in uniform. And when I'm in uniform, it's... Madame la Presidenta, sorry, Madame la Presidenta. Now, what is going on here? Nothing, Madame la Presidenta. I was just showing my friend Nico some of the cool stuff I've got. Hi. Good afternoon, senorita. And just what are your intentions toward my son? Intentions? We were just talking. How nice. She has good bone structure, Raoul. Has she any brains? She's a reporter. Is she? And what sort of questions has she been asking? I'm a freelance photojournalist. I do lifestyle features. For what sort of magazines? It looked safest to play dumb with good bone structure. Uh, Haya, uh, lifestyle of the super rich and vain glorious, Envy magazine. Um... Excellent. Raoul, you've chosen well for a change. It was pretty obvious who pulled the strings around here. I hope George was making good use of the time I was buying him. And then it goes, fa 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 fa. And when you were in this band of yours, you used to play that song for two hours? Yeah, we were really famous at our college. Still, ours wasn't as good as the original version. I have never heard that song before, yet I have no doubt that this must be true. Hey! Psst. Hey, George! Dwayne Henderson. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. Get to the American consul and tell him I've been imprisoned without charge. Get real, George. He was the previous occupant of that cell you're in. We're gonna have to use good old American know-how to get you out of there. Uh-oh. That and this truck full of explosives I've got here. Dwayne, Dwayne, listen to me. You'll kill all of us. You're such a naysayer, George. It'll go like clockwork. Uh, negative to negative. Uh, uh, it's positive to pos... Uh, you gotta get the bare copper wire here. Let me just... Uh, uh, go. Uh, damn. All right, I'll just hook that up. All right, there we go. Okay, just a minute. I've got to get to a safe distance. Quick, Miguel, hit the mattress. You have strange customs up north. Here we go. Too late. Are we dead yet? Horse shit. What happened to the explosives? There ain't no explosives. My dumbass supplier must have given me organic fertilizer instead of chemical. All I got here is 400 pounds of lightly fried horse apples. That's a lovely image, Dwayne. Never mind, I'll think of something. I couldn't reach the noose. Listen to me, Miguel. You give me that rope and I'll get us out of here. Is there somewhere you can hide from the general? Of course. My friends have a boat ready to take me upriver. But how are you going to break out of here with just a short piece of rope? I'm not sure, but I'll think of something. If your plan doesn't work, will you let me hang myself in peace? I had nothing else to ask him. Hey, Dwayne, I want you to tie this rope to your truck and then drive forward. I'd had no idea whether this was really going to work, but I'd seen it in a black and white western. Of course, Hopalong was using a horse and Dwayne had a four-ton truck, but hey, the principle's sound. Anything you say, George. Please forgive my mother. She can be a little difficult. Oh, my f eat. Raoul, propose, you idiot! Don't mind her, she just wants grandchildren. <laughs>
Don't think I can't hear you, Raoul. I want the worthy successor, and you're not it. Propose now, or I'll do it for you. Look, Nico, we haven't known each other very long, but... What the hell was that? I didn't know what was going on, but Georges had to be involved in it somewhere. I ain't gonna say a thing, cause that sweet sound of falling masonry says it all. Quick, senor, the river. Huh? Wait, what about Nico? George, what have you done? You only had to sneak a look at the chart, and it's turned into World War III. No time to explain, come on. Don't move, terrorist scum. You talking to me, Junior? Yes, I'm talking to you, fat man. And my name's not Junior. A word to the wise, Junior. You carry on waving that pea shooter in my face, and the next person who sees it is gonna be your proctologist. Savvy? General, I am happy to report that I have apprehended the terrorist. You idiot, not them. The other American and the French woman. They're the ones. When I recovered consciousness, I was alone, washed up on the riverbank. My head was aching fiercely, and my mouth tasted like a swamp. At first, I thought the music I heard was in my head. Just my luck to wind up in paradise with a migraine. But I followed the sound and discovered a tree house in a nearby clearing. That vine rope could be useful. The contraption consisted of a crude wooden wheel with wooden slats. The machine was broken. Perfect for a game of poo sticks. It would have been a shame to tamper with the elegant bridge. The water wheel had been built to provide a natural source of power. The wheel had a rim of roughly beaten iron. It seemed to be working just fine. It was a pile of damp leaves. It was a pile of damp leaves. It was a large wooden cross. It was heavy. I guess that was intentional. The leverage from the cross allowed me to turn one of the stones, but the other one remained stationary. It was a length of rope made of twisted and knotted vines. The vine provided a drive belt to connect the two stones.
now I had the contraption working. Hello? Anyone home? There was no way of climbing up to the treehouse. I'd always wanted a treehouse like that when I was a kid. A wooden box was connected to the nearby water wheel. It seemed to be working just fine. It was a water wheel. The iron rim of the water wheel would have torn the skin from my fingers if I touched it. The sound of running water always made me need the toilet. I briefly considered diving into the crystal waters, very briefly. It was a pile of damp leaves. It was that itsy bitsy tequila worm. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. It was the metal cone I'd taken from the chimney of the watchman's hut. I placed the newspaper clipping over the damp leaves. It was the flint statue. As I held the fetish to the iron rim of the wheel, a shower of sparks cascaded onto the leaves. Put out that fire. I've got a sick woman up here. Sorry, Father, but I needed to attract your attention. Who are you? And what do you want? My name is Stobar, George Stobar. I'm Father Hubert. I don't suppose you speak French. Huh? Why do you want to know that? I found a young woman with a fever by the river this morning. The poor girl is close to death. And there's nothing I can do for her but pray. I don't understand her, but I think she's speaking French. Hang on. That must be Nico. That's my girlfriend you've got in your treehouse. What's the matter with her? She's been bitten by a venomous river snake. But can't you do something for her? There's a cure, isn't there? I ran out of penicillin and morphine years ago. But the local people speak of a root which they believe will counteract the poison. Where can I find this root? I don't know. But maybe the shaman at the village can tell us. Will you show me the way to the village? Me? Oh, but I can't. Can't? Nico's life depends on it. You're right. Of course, I should, despite my own guilt and shame. But 
I can't go as a representative of God with a creased collar. A creased collar? You mean you put your personal attire higher than the life of a sick woman? I will not go to that village looking anything but my best. Give me your collar. I'm sure I can find a way to press it. Thank you, my son. In the meantime, I must contemplate my sermon. There was obviously more than a creased collar bothering the priest. So there I was, hundreds of miles from civilization, doing the housework for a priest. It's a strange world. The press worked surprisingly well on the collar. The stones were too heavy to turn by hand. What are you doing out here in the jungle? God's work. Not quite the destination I had in mind when I set out, but well, you know what they say, mysterious ways and so on. You didn't plan to end up here? No. I was on my way to the miner's camp in the north. I was stuck here when my boat capsized on the river. That's exactly what happened to me. How long have you been here? Eleven years. Here's your collar, Father. Thank you, George. You probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Oh, no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy, too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Do you want to tell me what happened at the village? I forgot my vows. I let myself be overwhelmed by the beauty of this unspoiled paradise. And in a moment of weakness, animal passion reared its lamented head. You know, you should be writing romantic novels. Did you experience some kind of a physical liaison at the village? Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I found myself doing the monkey dance. I've never heard it called that before. And I didn't want to pry any deeper into Hubert's murky past. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I still not finish my sermon. Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village. And it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall. By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants, what? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So? Everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. No, there's no one of that description here. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I thought he just made up all those stories he tells. I never thought of him as being wise. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. I'd like to see the shaman, please. 
You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? Would your wise man have any use for lipstick? Not in that color. Haven't you anything in black? Of course I don't. Look, I know it's not much, but I want your shaman to have this. Do you expect him to eat that? He's an old man, you know. He might choke. This cone could have a thousand uses. Yeah? Like what? A protective helmet? I don't think so. This stone is what brought me here. That's a spirit stone. I wouldn't touch it if I was you. You're right. It could be cursed. Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. So, is this your first visit to our planet? I am from the same planet as you. I'm from California. Why, we're practically neighbors. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. Stop. This is a private village. There wasn't much point in sending the empty box back to the shaman. Give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. What do you do for entertainment here in the jungle? We make documentaries. Me and Tabtick, we've appeared in seven TV films and an article in National Geographic. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. That woman certainly wasn't the reason I'd come to the village. It was a basket full of rocks. I couldn't think of any reason to steal the villagers' rock collection. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the coyote stone to this village. Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You would think he want to spend some time with his kids. Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys by my reckoning all conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey Dance. I don't suppose this would be any use to you. It sure would. This wax on a stick will change our lives. Uh, what do you want it for? To decorate our bodies for the monkey dance. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, 
My girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tuh. There's nothing sacred with these people. That was our secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the route? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy, Tezcatlipoca, took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse which marked the close of the fifth age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the Fifth Age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Catlipoca would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Cuaramonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar Stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle Stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote Stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. Tell me more about the Jaguar Stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Cuaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain. The man known as El Draco sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland across the Great Sea to England. Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. Suppose I was to believe there was anything in your story, other than the rambling delusions of a seriously wacky old man. Suppose I was to swallow it, hook, line, and kitchen sink. What then? Then you would see that the fate of the human race rests upon your shoulders. 
Do I get anything to help me combat Tezcatlipoca? Like what? Well, a magical weapon? Get real, George. Can you show me the way to the pyramid of Tezcatlipoca? Not until you possess all three stones. Now do I get the root? Here. Take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird sings to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome, but you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party daze. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger. Except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. It was the root which would cure Nico's snake bite. The shaman thinks you should go visit your kids. So, he told you. Look, Hubert, having a, well, an extended family is nothing to be ashamed of. If I was you, I'd be ashamed of not being there for them. It was that damned monkey dance that led me astray. Yeah, a sight like that must be difficult to forget. I've got the root, Hubert. What are you waiting for? Give it to the gal. Right. Nico, I brought you this root. Oh, oh. No way was she going to be able to chew the root. I needed to give her the antidote in a more digestible form. was ideal as a makeshift container. As the liquid was squeezed from the root, it collected in the cone. Hubert, the antidote. Well, what are you waiting for? Give it to the girl, quickly. Nico. Here, drink this. Oh, George, it's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, Josh Tobart? Well, the patient is sounding more like her own self already. Nico recovered quickly from her fever. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. I traced the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. It looked like a set of plans. The guy was studying a large document.
Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stobart. You're a surveyor, right, Mr. Bronson? And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else would I have a theodolite? Well, I don't know. Abbey, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. This is similar to the stone I'm looking for. What makes you think you'll find it here? Because when the stones were stolen in the 17th century... Hold it! The stones have been lost for 300 years? Approximately. And you're hoping to find them again? You're nuts. And why here? A wise old Indian shaman told me he saw the stones in a vision. Ha ha. That's rich. Listen, I got work to do, okay? Catch you later, Bronson. I recognized the instrument as a theodolite, but I had no idea how to operate it. It was a net left to dry in the sunshine. I didn't want a fishing net. A cute little putty tad. Actually, no. It was a mangy old flea bag. It was busily torturing a red ball. Two old ladies were sitting outside the house, enjoying afternoon tea. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Stobart? I love them. They're so cute with their claws and their little puckered butts. Aren't they, though? Don't encourage him, Mina. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins. One of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ. In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh, no. He got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It's a museum? That could be just what I'm looking for. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure green-eyed envy. 
He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money, trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark, and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Letter of mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. The flagpole had some sort of technical gadget on the end. The ladder extended easily. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. It was that itsy bitsy tequila worm. It was locked. The house is closed. How come? It is undergoing refurbishment. Refurbishment? Where are the workmen? Preparation is half the work, young man. The intention is to prepare the museum for the new century. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It would look nice in neon. A museum for a pirate? There was a stony silence. As I have already told you, sir, he was not a pirate. It's precisely this sort of vile misrepresentation that Mr. Bronson is seeking to rebalance. Oh? How? Mr. Bronson has kindly agreed to undertake the museum's refurbishment at a very reasonable price. He understands the importance of a sense of history. Funny. That's not the impression I got of Bronson at all. He also understands spherical geometry. Mina? Well, he does. Listen, ma'am. I came a long way to visit this place. If we make an exception in your case, everyone will want to get in. Pardon me, but I didn't exactly have to fight my way through the crowds. You're the second visitor we've had today. No, I'm sorry, but it's impossible. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the sisters. Hi, puss. Want to play? Hey, cat. Watch where you're putting those claws. The cat looked at me as if to say, why have you brought a dead worm halfway around the world? I had no answer. It would have been pretty cool to drug the cat, but I didn't have the heart. And besides which, those sisters would kill me. Hey, cat, want to play with this little doll? It wasn't exactly enthralled at coming face to face with the great god Tezcatlipoca. I doubted the cat would have salient remarks to make on a Mesoamerican artifact. I was right. Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. Bronson was looking through the theodolite again.
Tell me about the two old ladies. Who? The Catch sisters. One of them's crazy as a coot, and the other will turn you to stone if you're not careful. What are you doing with the theodolite? Surveying the old house. I got great plans for this place. Oh, yeah? You bet. Take a look around. What do you see? Paradise. I see opportunity. This place is ripe for development. I like it just the way it is. And that's where we differ. You see, Mr. Stobart, I'm what you might call a man of vision. I see a great future for Ketch's Landing, and it all starts here, with that house. How do you survey a house like that? I put a target reflector on the end of one of the flagpoles up there on the house. I sight on it from various locations through the theodolite, record the angles along the baseline, and triangulate them to give me the exact position of the target. Understand? Why the end of the flagpole? Wouldn't it have been better on a corner of a wall or something? Are you a surveyor? Uh, no, my degree's in law. Then shut up. Catch you later, Bronson. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. You know, wherever I go, I hear those words. Paris, Syria, Ireland, or Spain. Makes no difference. What do you think you're doing? I was trying to show some interest in your project. The kid looked about 11 or 12. He was fishing with the intense concentration of someone who had all the time in the world. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means, uh, well, it, it's just a name. I think Bronson is trying to cheat those sweet, vulnerable old ladies. That's a little unfair, isn't it? Okay. He's trying to cheat those seriously demented, poisonous old ladies. <laughs> you have to admire his acumen. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They kind of regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. What you got there? I didn't think the kid would be interested in that. It was a seaworthy little craft, in bad need of a coat of paint, but spotlessly clean and maintained. I didn't know the first thing about sailing a dinghy. There was nothing else up.
You're really fond of that cat, aren't you? He is our companion and our solace. I thought about catnapping the little monster until they let me in, but it wasn't my style. Maybe there was some other way I could use their affection for the cat to get me into the house. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk. Nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, 11, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Stobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. Okay, it was time for diversionary tactics. I thought I saw a little girl down on the beach. You must be mistaken. He must be mistaken. Mustn't he, Frost? I'm sure I'm not. A little girl and that young fisher boy. What? It's not possible. Uh, what were they doing? Oh, the kinds of things that all little boys and girls get up to at their age? When I was a little girl, we used to play cows and milkmaids. Well, betide you if you're lying to us, Mr. Stobart. Heaven help you. With a creak of ancient corsetry, the sisters sailed majestically over the distant horizon. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. Just my luck. I'd struck out again. The windows were all locked. I didn't have a flag on me, so the flagpole would have to stay bare. Maybe in my high school days, but not now. It was locked. Did you see the weird sisters come by here? Did I? They look madder than usual, so I hide until they gone by. Just as well. They thought you were playing with Emily. Boy, were they steamed. Emily? You're madder than them. Tell me about your friend Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch, the pirate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. Can you let me have a fish, kid? I thought you say you don't like fish. It's not for me. It's a present. For the old ladies? Well, it makes a change from flowers and candy. No, it's for their cat. Okay. What do I get out of it? I can pay you. 
I've got Quaramontian dollars, French francs, and traveler's checks. You must be joking. The nearest bank is three islands away. Will you give me a fish if I give you these... these, uh... Rio, are these ugly, tasteless nylon panties worth a fish? No, man. Is this worm worth a fish? Could be good bit. How did it die? I think it drowned in tequila. Just like my Uncle Gabriel. Yeah, I'll have that. Okay, I'll get you a fish. It might take a while, though. Can I take a look at your plans? No way. What interest would they be to you, anyhow? I've always had a secret desire to be a surveyor. You have? Sure. I mean, you surveyors are just like the great explorers, aren't you? Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama, Chris Columbus. Maybe you don't sail uncharted seas or discover new continents, but you're okay in my book. Horseshit. You just stay away from those plans, you hear? Say, was that kid giving you trouble? The Fisher boy? No, he was very polite. Ha! He's a juvenile delinquent. I suppose he told you I was a crook. Oh no, he's a good kid. He'd never say anything like that. Sure he would, the little punk. Did you see the sisters go by? Yeah, they wanted to string that Fisher brat up. Of course, uh, I told them where to find him. A fink, as well as a creep. Nice. But he'd managed to vanish somehow. Catch you later, Bronson. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the boy. No luck with the fish? No, man. They don't want bite. That's cause they know there's a storm brewing. Storm? Well, I don't think so. Hey! I got a bite! You have? It's a big one! A real big one! Reel him in, Rio. Jeez, that must be a whale or something. Rustiest whale I ever see. I still need a fish, Rio. Okay, make me try again. Maybe you better change your bait. The only serviceable part of the bicycle's wreck was a rubber inner tube. You just never know when you're gonna need stuff like that. It was the old inner tube from the bicycle which Rio had fished from the sea. Three feet of slightly perished rubber. Bound to be useful for something. There's a fish, my man. I can't put it in my pocket while it's flapping about like that. No problem.
I couldn't reach it. I'd have to do that from the ground. That should get the old cat dancing. I just hoped it didn't give itself a cardiac. I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. I couldn't think of any reason to climb the tree. I put the ball in the catapult, took aim, yes! Okay, so it was a lucky shot, but I'd knocked the theodolite target clean off the end of the flagpole. What the hell's going on here? Hi, Bronson. Nice to see you, too. You again. Have you been screwing around with my theodolite target? Where is it? I had to climb out of the window to put that one on. Damn it, I'm gonna have to go through all that again. Not this time. The house is locked up and the sisters aren't here. Hell's teeth! I'll have to put the spare target on the other flagpole. A whole morning's work wasted. I'm gonna fix all this and then I'm gonna fix you, you hear? Yeah? Fine. I'll be waiting. Oh! What you doing, Bronson? Just hanging around? I'm gonna kill you for this, Stobart! Get me down from here! What, so you can kill me? Gee, you talked me out of it, Bronson. I felt a little guilty about leaving Bronson up there, but not much, obviously. The marker was a bright, shiny thing, and I have a weakness for bright, shiny things. It wasn't gonna be much use without the theodolite, though.
I put my lucky lump of coal in the catapult, took aim. No! My lucky piece of coal vanished into the distance. It looked like it was going into orbit. With Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineers' drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. Yuba! Why is Mr. Bronson hanging from that flagpole? He climbed up there of his own accord. Then help him, you stupid man. Quickly, before he falls. Hi. Could I ask... Never mind that. Help poor Mr. Bronson. Hi, could I? Never mind. Hey, get me down. What's the magic word? Please. Oh, bad luck. I was thinking of Alakazam. I've got your plans, Bronson. I know about the hotel. So what? This is between me and the dames. Those sweet old ladies trusted you. This isn't what they wanted. Oh, people like them don't know what they want. Instead of wasting their money on this mausoleum, I can turn it to profit. But you should have discussed it with them first. If I was to let you down, will you promise to come clean about your plan? Sure I will. And you'll come to a tasteful compromise with Miss Frost and Miss Mina? Taste? What's taste got to do with architecture? Oh, dear. You'll have to stay where you are until you see sense. You rat. Catch you later, Bronson. Hi. Could I ask... Never mind that. Help poor Mr. Bronson. Look here, Bronson's plans. Was I right? Is that creep up to no good? Darn right he is. You know, Hanging from flagpoles suits you. Get me down! Not until the old ladies have heard exactly what you had planned. I had no more to talk to him about. Here, Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Bronson is a confidence trickster. Mina, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters. 
Especially confident ones. Come, Nina. Mr. Bronson, you may consider yourself persona non grata. Yes. Carve canum. Kindly disentangle yourself from our flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle. Eject. Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat. How dare you? Mina isn't crazy. She's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, as a bedbug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina the Lock. Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh! While Georges was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to London. It was a long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar Stone at the British Museum. The carving looked Central or South American in style, perhaps Aztec. I doubted I could sneak this enormous stone out under my jacket. It was a woven wall hanging with a South American design. Excuse me, miss. Please don't touch the exhibits. The mask looked more African than American. I didn't want the mask, although it certainly reminded me of somebody. It was a stone identical in size and style to the Coyote stone. However, this stone bore the image of a jaguar. The cabinet was locked. The two Japanese girls were inexplicably amused by something. Bonjour. I wonder if you could help me. Oh, hey, <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, never mind. Perhaps I'm a Philistine, but old vases bore me. The display case... Con it was a phone, probably for staff only. The attendant didn't show it, but I sensed he was watching my every move. The carving looked Buddhist in subject, but Mesoamerican in execution. It was a small, flat square of polished obsidian. Nothing like the one I was looking for. According to the caption, this was the scrying mirror given to Dr. John D. by Sir Francis Drake. There was a huge carving of somebody who must have been important once. There was nothing I wanted to do with the statue except find out where he bought his hat. Très chic. I wanted nothing to do with that statue. It made me nervous somehow. Can I help you, miss? What can you tell me about the scrying mirror? Ah, that belonged to the alchemist and part-time Elizabethan spy, Dr. John Dee. It was brought back from the New World by Sir Francis Drake and presented to him. It's Mayan, you know. What is a scrying mirror? 
It's rather like a crystal ball. And you can't see anything in it. Apparently, he had a partner who used it to talk with angels. If you ask me, you were barking mad. Have you ever heard of an English sea captain called El Draco? El Draco? Not a very English name. I think that's what the Spanish would have called him. It was about the time of the conquistadors. 16th century. Oh, I know. That's what the Spanish called Sir Francis Drake. Francis Drake? Have you got anything here that belonged to him? Indeed, miss. We have a couple of artifacts he brought back from one of his journeys. It didn't look anything like the coyote stone. This one was like a little black shaving mirror. Is the scrying mirror the only piece of obsidian Drake gave Dee? Funny you should ask. There's another called the Jaguar Stone. Dee never liked it, though. Said there were angels in the mirror, but devils in that stone. Can I take a closer look at Dee's mirror, please? No, you cannot. That's why the cabinet is locked. They tried some new-fangled interactive scheme. And you can guess what happened. Bloody kids ran off with half the exhibits. Hands on experience, my foot. In my days, it was hands off, I ask you. What do kids know about ancient Mayan civilization? Nothing. Can you tell me something about the Jaguar stone? Certainly, miss. The so-called Jaguar stone was brought back from the Americas by Sir Francis Drake and presented, with, as you already know, the more famous scrying mirror, to John Dee. The old loony didn't like the stone, though. Reckoned it was tainted by the devil. Come along, miss. I'll show you the mirror. I've already... Oh, never mind. There. John Dee's famous crying mirror, given to him by Francis Drake. Do you know if this mirror has any relevance to Tezcatlipoca? Who? Tezcatlipoca? Tezcatlipoca? I can't even say it. Ah, oh, there's someone here who'll be able to help you better than me. This young lady has some questions to ask, Professor. I think she's from France. Professor Roubillet. Eh? What? You two know each other, do you? Uh, excuse me, the telephone. We meet again. Mademoiselle? France, eh? Yes, I believe that's where you live, Professor. I have a house there, on the outskirts of Paris. But I haven't been back for many months. What can you tell me about the Jaguar Stone, Professor? It's obsidian, from the Chichen Itza region. Professor Oubier, your taxi's here. If you'll excuse me, I have some urgent business to attend to at the docks. Can you answer me some questions about the Jaguar Stone? Certainly, miss. If you just step this way. It's gone. Some sods half inched it. Half inched? Stolen it, miss. Never mind. The silent alarm will have been tripped. I'm afraid nobody can leave until our crack security team gets here. How long will that take? It could be a while. I think it's their tea break. The thief could be miles away by then. Don't you worry about that, miss. Just don't try to leave. It was too much of a coincidence that Oubier showed up and the stone promptly disappeared. I didn't have time for their crack security team to finish their tea. I had to get after him. There was nothing very useful in my bag. Just a single hair clip. The cabinet contained a dagger decorated with Mayan designs. 
The cabinet was locked. The cabinet was locked. Look at this. The thief left this key in the cabinet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That makes the theft an inside job, right? Oh dear. In other words, the thief was Professor Oubier. Well, let's leave that for the police to decide, shall we? I better phone them right away. I knew I had nothing to worry about if the police were called. Yes, I'll hold. But I had to catch up with Oubillet, and fast. The key unlocked the case. I locked the case again and took the key. The key didn't fit this lock. That's the kind of thing Georges would do, not me. It was an obsidian dagger, thin and razor sharp. The doors were securely locked. The doors were securely locked. The dagger might leave open the doors, but I wasn't going anywhere until I knew where Oubier had gone. All that was left inside the cabinet was a card describing the missing stone. I'm sorry, miss, but I shall have to ask you to stay. Oh, but surely you don't suspect me of stealing the stone? No, but you will have to make a statement to the police. You're a witness. The cabinet was locked. There was nothing useful in the bag. It was a hair clip. It was the key to the museum display cabinet. It was an obsidian dagger, thin and razor sharp. The display The mask. I didn't want. There was no point in locking the cabinet now the stone was gone. The doors. The dagger might leave or open the doors, but.
You'll have to be quick, miss. I'm on the phone. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubier has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo, an exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess. I levered the handle open with the thin dagger. The room had been decorated to resemble the interior of a sailing ship. It was disturbingly effective. It was a beautifully crafted model of a sailing ship. The ship looked too fragile to touch. It was an old book with spidery writing covering the open pages. March 20th, 1670 fix. Engaged frigate off Fan Falvador? It was garbage. I guess being a pirate didn't require too many academic qualifications. The passage went on to describe how Ketch had got wind of the approach of a fleet of English ships. It seemed the new governor had not shared his predecessor's views on Ketch's activities. They were out for his blood. Sailed to that place where I made secure my fortune. I returned safe in the knowledge that the governor shall not discover that which I had hidden. For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle It was Captain Ketch's sea chest. Its battered appearance hinted at salty tales of maritime adventure and swashbuckling. Long months at sea with a rum-sodden, mutinous crew, hard tack and scurvy. And this chest, full to the brim with Ketch's loot, pearls, diamonds, emeralds, and doubloons. On the other hand, it could have been full of spare blankets. Hmm. Surprise! What the? Who are you? I'm Emily. What were you doing in there, Emily? Hiding. What are you doing here? Uh, Grown-up stuff. Grown-ups? I'm never going to grow up, I'm not. You shouldn't be here. What's your name? I'm George. Pleased to meet you, Jaws. George. Jaws? Jeez. Make your mind up. What can you tell me about Captain Ketch? That's him on the wall, in the picture. Yeah? Boy, that's interesting. He was a sailor captain. This is his house. Why don't you go play with Rio? I'm not allowed. How come? Because Aunt Frost says I'm not allowed out of the house. That's why, Mr. Nosy Beak. Too bad. Why don't you ask your other aunt if you can play with Rio? Aunt Mina's cuckoo. Aunt Frost says so. She says when the Lord handed out common sense, Aunt Mina was off getting double portions of chin. That Rio's a smart kid. He helped me out with Bronson. Rio is clever. He can spit ever so far. Look, an ancient Mayan stone. Is that a magic stone? Well, I don't know about that. No. Would you like to play darts? No. Oh, come on. I'll throw, you catch. That's dangerous. Darts will stick in me and make me bleed. Do you know how to use a theodolite? We don't learn anything about surveying at my school. Not until fifth grade. It was an actual pirate ship chart. Okay, I've had my hands on an historical document. 
Now what? The chart fitted exactly into the recess on the top of the desk. What you doing, Jaws? I'm putting this old map on the desk. What you doing that for, Jaws? Because it was obviously intended to fit in this recessed area. How'd you work that out? It's obvious. It was one of those old pens made out of a feather. That might come in useful in ticklish situations. What you doing now, Jaws? Knock it off, will ya? There's something you want to know. I don't buy cute or lost puppy. I'm just borrowing this feather, that's all. Why? I might be able to make use of it. You gonna steal it? That's bad. I'm gonna tell on you. No, don't do that. Why not? Well, because I'm not stealing, just borrowing. It was an indented well in the corner of the desk. I guess it was intended to hold ink, but it seemed unnecessarily wide. Maybe Ketch had used it to hold his rum bottles steady in heavy seas. It was the holder for the quill. It was an old wooden barrel. Maybe it was from Ketch's ship. Yow! I should have known better than to put my hand in there. Grandma Stobart had a nasty experience in a water butt once. It was an old... Maybe that wheel was from Ketch's ship. Suddenly, I was 12 years old again. Captain Frederick Ketch. 1570. Around his neck was a cross. Maybe he was a part-time pirate. It was the port... The portrait might have made a nice souvenir, but it was too large to carry. It was a ship's bell. Two bells and all's well. Pirates were cool. Hard a port, bosun. Aye, aye, Captain Stobart. She cannot take it, Captain. The lad's dead. Abandon ship. The little girl had cute freckles, cute little nose, and the eyes of a KGB interrogator. Around her neck was a large cross on a chain. It was identical to the one in the portrait of Captain Ketch. It was the quill I had found in the Ketch Museum. Why don't you run along and play? Aunt Mina told me, stay out of mischief. Well, that doesn't mean you have to stay indoors, does it? On a beautiful day like today? There's a storm coming. Oh, nuts. You don't know that. I do so. I can see the whole world from the window. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm busy. That cross you're wearing, Emily. It's my lucky Jesus cross. It's just like the one Captain Ketch wore. Uh-huh. Can I borrow it? Uh-uh. What would you trade for that cross, Emily? A puppy. Well, I don't happen to have a puppy in my pocket right now. Can you think of anything else you'd trade? Don't know. A cute little putty tat. What do you give to a small, irritating girl who asks about everything? Try a conch. Delicate colors, interesting shape, and when you put it to your ear, you can hear the sea. Yeah, why is that? Usually because you're standing next to it. Cool. Have you got one? Yeah, but I promise it to my sister. She well vexed with me. Why is your sister mad with you? 
Well, last night, when I got home with our supper, she went wild. Rio, she said, how come all you ever catch is puffer fish? A sick of puffer fish. What I want is tiger fish. So don't bother come back home till you catch one, boy. I don't see how I'm gonna catch no tiger fish. All I have is a fishing pole and a worm. What do you need to catch a tiger fish? One of them real fancy flies like the rich fishermen use. Any use for a quill? What's a quill? It's what people used to write with in Captain Ketch's days. No, man. I'd sooner be fishing. It was the poison dart. I'd never known anything keep her quiet so effectively. It was Bronson's theodolite. The cat made short work of the feather, tearing it into a blizzard of small pieces. I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. It was the electronic marker which Bronson used with his theodolite. The quill had been torn into small pieces. Hey, this is just what you need to make a fly. Thanks. Let's hope them tiger fish hungry. A deal's a deal. Here's a conch. Here, I've got a conch. Would you like it? Dunno. Aunt Frost told me never to take presents from strange men. I'm not a strange man. Then why are you called Jaws, Jaws? That's a stupid name. I'm not called... Look, conch, pretty. Swap for the cross, yes or no? Mm. Right, this thing's going out the window. Okay, we'll do swapsies. Ketch's cross slipped snugly into the penholder. What you doing now? Grown-up stuff. I doubt that. I've put your cross in this little hole in the desk. Why? Impulse, mainly, with a dash of irrational intuition. Silly. Only women have intuition. Holding that lantern, I felt kind of biblical. Like... Jesus, or, nor Florence Nightingale. The lantern fitted so precisely in the inkwell, it could only be deliberate. Before you ask, I've put the lantern in the inkwell. See? 
It fits. Why? Because it was cut to fit. Why? Because sneaky old Captain Ketch made it that way. Why? What is with all the questions? Because I'm interested. Why? Because I have the insatiable curiosity of the young. Why? All right. Truce. The lantern cast a strong light over the desktop. The light cast a shadow of the cross. And the shadow fell precisely over a small, unnamed island shaped like a skull. That must be it. Ketch's Treasure Island. Uh-oh. That zombie island. It's a bad place. No kidding? Well, bad place or not, that's my next port of call. Can I come too? The hell you can. I never get to leave the house. Would you take me to, uh, Zombie Island? In this weather? You madman. The rain will keep the zombies indoors. Just say, I did meet a zombie. What would you do? There ain't no zombies on Zombie Island. At least, not anymore. It's uninhabited. Good. What do you mean, not anymore? You still want to go? I guess. Well, I ain't had no luck with them tiger fish. And with the mood my sister is in, I'll be safer with the zombies. So, this was Zombie Island. Somehow, I'd been expecting something more sinister. Come on, Rio. Let's find that treasure. No, thanks. I'm staying right here. Oh, come on. You said yourself there's no zombies left. Yeah, but that was while there was a big pile of seawater between me and this place. All me have now is this little bit between the boat and the shore, and I'm hanging onto it. No, it can't be. But it was my lucky piece of coal. Rio, how far away is Ketch's Landing from here? Best part of 10 miles. Why? 10 miles? That catapult must have been a lot more powerful than I thought. It was too high. I couldn't get up there. The sea looked inviting, but I was here to do a job. The cliff stopped me getting off the beach. The cliff was... And I couldn't find any. It was too high. I couldn't get up there. The sea looked invite. That Emily sure asks a lot of questions. Resident man, this whole Emily business just isn't funny. Look, 
We're obviously at cross purposes here. I'm talking about Emily Ketch. Yeah, and so am I. She was my friend. Her aunts hated it, but we did move together, you know? She used to be real keen at hide and seek. It could take hours to find her. One time, the last time, it took years. She must have shouted and screamed herself hoarse, but there was nobody to hear her. Where'd she hidden herself? Captain Ketch's old sea chest. The only way to open it was from the outside. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good. We never exchanged another word about Emily Ketch. The outcrop was about the only feature on the cliff face. The cliff stopped me getting off the beach. It was too high. I couldn't get up there. Rio's boat was strewn with fishing nets and tackle. It was the boat that... I was quite happy where I was. Relatively speaking. Could I borrow your net? Yeah, man, no problem. You planning on catching some fish? Nope. I'm after a big rock. Here I go. Wish me luck, Rio. Good luck, George. Watch out for the walking dead. I stumbled down dark stairwells for what seemed like forever, until suddenly I found myself... Wow! In an abandoned London underground station. This place must have been closed down decades ago. The machine needed to be fed a coin before it would operate. The machine looked like it had sold its last ticket a long time ago. I'd probably break my neck if I climbed over the sleepers, or worse, a heel. A pile of old railway sleepers was blocking the platform. It was a poster advertising holidays in Scotland. One D only was embossed below the coin slot. Something protruded slightly from the slot. I pushed the hair clip into the slot and whatever was stuck there disappeared into the machine. I pulled out an old English penny. The machine needed to be... F the slot was much... The tray... That won't. The machine. An ancient bar of chocolate dropped into the tray at the bottom of the machine. And as a special bonus, the penny dropped through to the reject pocket. I pulled out an old English penny.
I took the ancient bar of chocolate. It was a very old bar of chocolate with a row of boys pictured on the wrapper. The ghost didn't seem threatening in any way. The ghost obviously didn't want to talk. Perhaps it was shy. Who the hell are you? Joey, is that you? Oh, I remember you now. Hey, listen, don't go near that hole. Nobody tells Robert Foster what to do, lady. You don't understand. I've played this game before. There's something horrible in that hole. Some beast with tentacles. You're nuts. They don't make animations like that anymore. The ghost didn't seem th I put the old penny into the slot. The needle twitched rustily and the machine spat out a card. The weight was in imperial units. It meant nothing to me. The card also had my fortune on it. A family quarrel will turn out to your advantage. It was a maintenance cupboard. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. The card just bent when I tried to force it down the edge of the cupboard door. The blade of the dagger just fitted between the door and the soft wood frame. The door gave slightly and then held firm. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. Uh, no. My fingers were too big to reach into the... A small crack had appeared where the dagger had pried the door from its frame. Through the crack, I could just make out the latch which stopped the door from opening. I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. train was my ride out of it. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks. I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. The 
the train was my ride out of there. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks. It was a stagnant swamp. Nothing, I mean nothing, would possess me to step into that swamp. The path was blocked by an ugly and extremely dangerous looking boar. It was a There was something in that hole beneath the rock. As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there, a long-toothed, snarling, furry, wild thing. The reed was a lot shorter since that creature had savaged it. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous.
the rock was partially overgrown by creepers. The creeper just came away from the rock as I pulled it. No good. I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. I could see no point in tying the net to the creepers on the rock. The creeper didn't look like it would hold my weight. The creeper felt unpleasant and fleshy. The net attached easily enough to the creeper and seemed secure. Hold on, I've been here before, haven't I?
great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized. What is this? The magic forest of deja vu or something? All the paths look the same. Three shallow holes had been made in the rock. Initials carved into the stone read F.K. Frederick Ketch had been here. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, the rock I was looking for.
The Xibalba Princess lay at anchor just below Tower Bridge. I knew I'd found the right ship as soon as I saw Pablo at the rail. A guard patrolled the deck. He was sure to be armed. It was a porthole to the main cabin. It looked like the door to some sort of utility locker. Metal hooks had been welded onto each side of the door frame. A mop for swabbing the deck stood against the wall. I didn't think I had time to get up the ladder before the guard reappeared. Got you. It was a port. But the collar woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone. You're sure? Yes, of course. It's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Garzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, UVA. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priests' plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tetzcatlipoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for this world. We have spoken of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now, you are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died, you know. What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. 
You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Kazak! Which one? I couldn't just rifle his body without making sure he was really dead. Oubillé lay sprawled across the table. There were no signs of life, but I checked that Oubillé really was beyond help. We were going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Oubillé would have approved. It was the Jaguar stone, all right. Pirates! I was about to make good my escape when... What? Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. Don't bother. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart. George Stobart. Uh, two B's and two T's. It's okay, Mr. Hawks. He wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy? What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island, the only book I ever read twice. I don't recall any girls in Treasure Island. Gotta think box office. People like that kind of thing. What other changes have you made to the story? Just a few minor details. You haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Of course Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His parrot. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think blind pew's blind? Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later, after they've escaped the volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions spent on a movie, and nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Haiku McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez. Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh, right. I'd never heard of her. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? No, but I guess you're gonna tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies? A crazed gleam came into his eye. Get me the writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. The great director. Well, that's what his pose was supposed to say. He reminded me of Ed Wood. It was the cameraman. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. He was a middle-aged man with a pockmarked face. Hi, George Stobart. Hello, mate. You're English, right? Blimey, you don't miss much, do you? Bert Savage, have you seen what the caterers laid on today? Buns and pancakes. 
That's awful. It's an improvement on yesterday. The buns are stale, but the pancakes are bloody lovely. How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Thought to myself, you've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. What training does a stuntman do? First, they told me to stand in the road. Then, they run me down. Straight up. Drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realized he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say. Flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too. Ordering this, demanding that. Did you ever meet Bertrand Ubier? Meet him? No. I saw him a few times, though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Do you think Ubier murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah, but people who knew her saw the other side. Have you ever seen anything like this before? What's that, mate? Stone axe? No, it's just a piece of polished stone. Very nice, very nice indeed. Shine it up a bit, you get a few bob for that. It looked even worse than the ones I'd just been through. I'd seen a lot of strange things on this island, but here was a bush that was buzzing. Hey there, I'm George Stobart. Well, hi, handsome. You're cute. I wish it was you playing the lead male instead of that kid. I can't act, ma'am. So what? I bet you can kiss. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with a real movie star. What's it like sharing the spotlight with an actor who's young enough to be your son? What do you mean? What do you think of Hawk's treatment of Treasure Island? It's okay, I guess. I never saw the original. It's a book. One of my favorites. Really? The novelization's out already? What part are you playing? Pirate Babs, the ruthless and passionate Lady Buccaneer. It's a great part. I get to kiss a lot, and I kick ass. Like the boots. What do you think of these? Ew, they're awful. You have no idea how much you've just gone up in my estimation. I found this reed in the swamp on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I used it to shoot a poison dart at a wild boar. It was a real-life drama, not just a scene from a movie. Right. She was having trouble with the whole real-life-is-not-a-movie concept. Take a look at this ancient Mayan artifact. That's just a hunk of stone with a picture scratched on it. In a way, I guess. You don't happen to have seen anything similar, have you? No. Hi there, George Stobart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hi, Ku McEwen. You're playing Jim Hawkins, right? Jimbo. I had Mr. Hawks change his name. Jimbo Hawkins. Right. Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small and perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. It's more like I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? Stovart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. I'll get a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. Haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs. 
who's fallen in love with you. That whirring sound you can hear? It's Robert Louis Stevenson spinning in his grave. Okay, people. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my big speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Oh, please. And action! Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why, if it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's men, but it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. And cut! Good heavy breathing, Sharon. Natch, I'm a pro. Did you get the heavy breathing flash? Did I have a boss? We should have made this movie in 3D. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Savage, on set, damn it. The bun was so stale, it felt like a small rock. I didn't want another one of the pancakes in my pocket. It was a stale bun which could easily have passed for a rock. It was a plain pancake. Not such a good idea. Hey, Haiku. Yeah, man. You got something to show me? I'd like your opinion on something. Yeah? What? Do you like a pancake? Look at that thing, man. It's dripping with syrup. You'll have every bug in 10 miles on your case if you get that stuff on you. I guess you're right. I may not be making millions of dollars, and I may not have thousands of nubile, if uncritical, young women lusting for my body, but I've got something that you haven't. This small piece of coal. Man, you're getting freaky on me. Would you like a bun? No way, man. I have to be careful what I eat. Yeah, never eat anything smarter than yourself. Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Ew, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. Would you like this pot of syrup? No way. I'm messed up enough already. Would you like a bun? No way. The last one I tried cracked my dentures. You wouldn't get me up there. It was teen idol Haiku McEwen in his first starring role.
those hornets were not pleased. Okay, the next scene is down on the beach. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the cave of the crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. There it was, the rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. Who, oh, me? I want you to stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. What do you think of Haiku McEwen? What's to think? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I'll earn in a lifetime. Good luck to him. I was talking to Mr. Savage, the stuntman. Is he all right? What makes you say that? He's not making any sense. The guy's English. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out to be. What's the problem? Huh. <laughs> What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. Look, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them hornets would go for me. Oh, Bert, you've wounded me. How can you think that? Well, by looking at the evidence. I don't know why you still want to be a stunt man anyway. Cause it's all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap, telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own megaphone. I'll do it. George Stobart, international adventurer and roaming careers advisor. What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? <laughs> that was me. Or what about They Prayed to Satan? I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Yeah, nice here, innit? My Beryl used to love the seaside. They are at Clacton. Bloody smashing. A pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quick feel on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Course them days, you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tombola, frothy coffee at the calf of the prom. You know, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. I've had a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did me back in being chased by them ornits over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field.
Why don't you use that cave up on the rock pillar at the end of the beach? We don't have a stuntman anymore. Hey, I'll do the stunt. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I heard it. Good enough, we're covered. Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, you name it. Okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. No, we're not. The camera's still bogged down. Shoot, I forgot about that. No go, Stobart. We'll have to use this cave after all. You don't look happy. Why should I be happy? Look at that cave. It's supposed to be where the treasure is. So? Look at it. It's crap. Does that look like the sort of place anybody would hide treasure? I should have had props build me a proper damn cave. A cinematic cave. What do you mean, a cinematic cave? One with drama. Danger. One that looks like the mouth of a big stone skull would be cool. But I'd settle for drama and danger. Hey, surfer boy, stay out of there. Oh, what is it this time? That's the wardrobe tent. You've got no business to be going in there. Looked like I wasn't gonna get to play dress up. Flash? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. So? So you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? You're right, dammit. Hitchcock, Wells, none of them needed one. For crying out loud, Sam Raimi stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, get me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. George, get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my way. Ready when you are, Mr. Hawks. I returned to Cuaramonte and found that Georges had left a message with Conchita. He'd already left for the Indian village, so I hurried to catch up with him. When I arrived, I found a scene of desolation. These sunglasses are Georges. Georges, where are you? Titi Poco, I'm almost glad to see you. Little asshole, what happened here? Are you responsible for this? Uh. And where's Georges? Have you seen him? Uh -uh. He was pointing to the remains of a burned out hut. It was too hot to pick up. 
I didn't need the lantern since it was still daylight. Besides, it was broken. It was a smashed lantern, probably the cause of this destruction. It was a very... That barrel would have looked great on my patio, filled with shrubs. There was nothing in the barrel. That cup was no use to me. It had a hole in it. They were Georges' shades. The water could have cooled the stone if I could figure out a way of getting it into the barrel. I just didn't have the strength to tip that barrel. Hey, Shorty, make yourself useful and help me with this barrel. Thanks. I recognize that. It's the Coyote Stone. What is it? Where are you pointing? We arrived to find Georges being led up the stairs. We clearly didn't have much time. The engine looked like it was supposed to power the lift. It was an old electricity generator. It was a length of strong rope. It was a simple wooden platform lift, used for shifting equipment, I presumed. Hey, senorita! Too late. I had been seen. Bonjour, Capitaine. <laughs> Only Sergeant, pretty one. What are you doing here? Snuggles said I could come here with him. Snuggles? Oh, I mean the general. We are, uh, friends. May I go up the pyramid? Ah, uh, we have strict instructions not to let anybody pass. Oh, but I've told you who I am. Surely nobody would mind. Well... Oh, please, I'd be ever so grateful. I tell you what, I'll ask Pablo if it's okay for you to go up. If Pablo saw me, I'd be dead. Uh, no, it's not worth the bother. I'm not really that interested in their stupid pyramid anyway. Well, okay. It's men's work up there anyway. I'll just run along and play around here, okay? Okay, you do that. It looked like Karzak was using Quaramontean troops and local Indians as his guards. It was a small, screw-fit, cylindrical housing. It looked like a fuel line.
The fuel from the severed line had formed a pool. The button didn't seem to do anything. The button didn't seem to do anything. The motor spluttered into life. The scaffold gantry went all the way up the pyramid. The engine was working okay, but it wasn't connected to the equipment lift. Poco, I have an important job for you. Take this rope to the top of this scaffolding and throw it over the top. Rope. Would you like some chocolate, Titi Poco? It's good vintage. <laughs> You're smarter than you look. How did you hook up with a maniac like Karzak in the first place? Karzak? Whoop whoop, loco! Yes, he scares me too. Poco. When I tell you, I want you to copy what I am doing. Copy. Okay? Copy.
Georges! I realized those bastards were going to sacrifice Georges to Tezcatlipoca. Over my dead body? Thankfully, Georges was the only one to notice me. Where are they? The eclipse is about to happen. Patience. Your mother will be here soon and Karzai will be close behind. Just keep the Yankee covered and leave the worrying to others. Yeah, Raoul. The maniacs were going to sacrifice Georges. Shut up, Stobar. Just shut up. Calm down. He's no threat. Hey, Raoul, why don't you do us both a favor and shoot Pablo? You're very funny, Stobard. I haven't forgotten Marseille. When Karzai cuts your heart out, I'll be the one laughing. I'll bet I'm not the only one due for the chop around here either. Hey, Raoul? I'm warning you. Raoul was a bundle of raw nerves. I hoped Georges wouldn't push him too far. Karzak's goons had left an ammunition belt lying around. It was a round of ammunition. I couldn't get the belt into the flames without Pablo seeing me. The crates and drums were sealed and I had no way of getting into them. The crates and drums... There were a few sealed crates and drums. None of them looked like they might be useful. Poco, do you still have that lighter gun you pulled on me so amusingly? What's going on over there? Do you need help, my pretty? Nothing's wrong. I dropped uh, a cigarette, but everything is under control. I'll have the fire out in a minute or two. What's that? What's happening? Trouble. Give it up. The pyramid's surrounded. I'll find out what the trouble is. Watch Stover doesn't pull any tricks. If he does, shoot him in the head, not through the heart. Why does it matter? He'll be dead either way. His heart belongs to Tezcatlipoca. That's not true. We just had dinner a couple of times. The crates and... Drop the gun or I'll shoot! Please! Don't hurt me! Don't worry yourself. My finger isn't loaded. Nico, what are you doing here? Firstly, I'm going to set George free and then screw up Karzak's scheme. No! I... I can't let you do that. Karzak has promised me power. Raoul, wake up. The only thing Karzak has on offer is death. You may want to ask Oubie, except you can't. Karzak murdered him. You're lying. Oubie is in Europe. Sure he's in Europe. In London, on a mortuary slab with two bullet holes in him. But Karzak promised. 
When he frees Tezcatlipoca, we'll all be granted great power. Listen to her, Raoul. Karzak's insane. I, I, I don't know. I, I need to think. You've let your mother do your thinking for you up to now. You need to think for yourself. Your mother and Karzak think alike. There's only one expendable member of the plan left, and that's you. Mother would never betray me. Oh, I'm tired of trying to reason with you, Raoul. Titipoco. Watch this man, and if he makes a move, shoot him with your gun. Hold still, Georges. I don't want to sacrifice you by accident. You have no idea how glad I am to see you. They were going to cut your heart out. I think I can guess. We can save the happy reunions for later. We've got to move. Come on! We're safe. This is a dead end. We're toast. I know, Tiripoko. I'm not too happy here either. He knows this is Tezcatlipoca's pyramid, the house of the enemy. Well, we can't stay here like rats in a trap. And we can't go out the way we came in. It would be suicide. I'll have a look round. Maybe there's another way out. In the meantime, take this. It's the Coyote Stone. It might bring you luck, I hope. You managed to recover the stones from the village? Then we might have a chance after all. Incidentally, what would Titipoco have done if Graciento had moved? Titipoco? Nothing. He's given up violence. Oof. The lever was very difficult to move and appeared to do nothing anyway. Georges? Yeah? That lever didn't seem to do anything. Know what I say? Nil desperandum. Georges, sometimes I could just punch you. This was a time for action, not talk. Still no good. There was a large image on the wall of a man in ceremonial garb. More usefully, there were also a couple of levers. Georges? Yeah? Georges, I can only pull one lever at a time, and I think we need to pull both together. Okay, I'm up for that. Raoul, there's something suspicious. Go this sacrifice! Where is it? Nico was here with Titipoco. They set him free. I, I couldn't stop them. You idiot! I should have strangled you at birth. Titipoco's gone soft. He wouldn't have hurt you. I know that. The darkness of this sun is almost upon us, and we have no sacrifice to appease Tezcatlipoca. Have you any idea what your incompetence will cost us? I think so. And I'm glad. What? The Mayans weren't fools. Tezcatlipoca should stay exactly where they put him. Finally got some backbone from somewhere, huh? Shame it's so late in the day. I'd rather die than see you and Karzak with that devil's power. Fine, we're still a sacrifice short. See, the eclipse begins. Pablo, kill him! Tezcatlipoca can feed upon his yellow heart. Nico was right all along, but it's still not too late. 
Come on then, Pablo. Let's see who sacrifices who. What place is this? I was in some sort of strange room. Tiles and dials. The priests who designed this place must have known how to use them. I was going to have to figure it out for myself if I ever wanted to get out of here. The room was dominated by an enormous device, decorated with the usual Mayan motifs. It held two great discs, each covered in glyphs. The dial didn't want to move. The dial didn't move at all. The dial The dial didn't move at all. There were several The dial didn't want The dial d The tile The tile didn't The tile The dial. It was the great stone head that had spat me out. It reminded me of an ex-boyfriend, on both counts. The tile moved slightly.
The tile didn't move. The tile didn't move at all. The tile moved inwards and clicked home. The tile didn't Wiggle. <rire> Et voilà. So I thought this is it, you know? This is true love. Anyway, I have to leave for a few weeks, and when I come back, what do I find? Uh. Damn right. And with who? Labano, that creep. Mm. Huh? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought.
Oh, heck. Looks like another dead end, Titty Poco. Any ideas? I was hoping for something a little more constructive. Never mind, I'll have a look around. Look, I need to light this torch. Can you do something clever with a couple of sticks or flint and tinder or... a cheesy novelty cigarette lighter, as it turned out. A really creepy statue. The figure held a skull and a bowl, probably for a heart to go in. Yuck! The only thing he could do with the statue was sit on it. And Titty Poco had beaten me to that. The only thing he could do... Well, there was nothing else to do around here, so I pulled the lever. Nothing's happened. Oh, I hate that. Don't you hate that? Ah! Poco? Oh, my... Whoa! Great. I had no idea where I was, no idea where the others had got to, and time was running out to stop Karzak. Still, I wasn't dead yet, so it wasn't all bad news. The torch could stay there until I really needed it. A stone slab that must have weighed tons sealed the door. Charming. Lovely. Looks like my school gym teacher. The statue looked like it doubled as an incense burner. Every time I think this place can't get any spookier, it does. Yes, finally, I'm out of here. Once more, into the unknown. Cool. 
Onwards and downwards, Mr. Stobart. This was it. The Pyramid's central chamber. Its dark heart. Once before in my life, I'd stood in front of a door and thought, this is it. If I go through there, I'm going to die. I'd been wrong then. I hoped I was wrong now. This was the door that led to the central chamber and the smoking mirror. Must remember that happiness is an inside job. If your name is Mary, if your name is Bob, it's up to you if you sing or sob. Remember, happiness is an inside job. A lot of people travel in search of the sun. Pretty soon you find happiness is an inside job. If your name is Mary, if your name is Bob, it's up to you if you sing or sob. Remember, happiness is an inside job. You can have a Thank you. 